It was very dark. Only large gray clouds were visible in the sky. The huge monster opened its red evil eyes and dug its sharp claws into the stone ground. Then he took off and with a loud shout rushed at Jang Yi and the people with him. The monster's eyes glowed with a bright red light and looked like lasers. The monster was hundreds of times bigger than Jang Yi and the people standing nearby. People stared sternly at the monster. There were three of them, Jang Yi, Mu Chen, and another girl named Zhou Zhou. The monster asked how they, mere mortals, dare to challenge someone like him. Then Zhang Yi and his team decided to attack the monster and grab their weapons. Zhang Yi grabbed his huge sword and jumped straight at the monster. So he was able to defeat this huge monster, who screamed in unbearable pain, and then fell down. Zhang Yi walked up to the cliff and was rewarded with a fragment of the dragon's blood scroll. Then Zhang Yi offered to connect the nine fragments of the scroll, which they did, and as a result received the legendary five-star dragon blood scroll. Zhang Yi was very happy about this, but his happiness was not destined to last long. Suddenly someone stabbed Zhang Yi from behind with a knife, and he dropped the scroll from his hands. It turned out to be one of Zhang Yi's teammates, Mu Chen. Mu Chen apologized and said he would take care of the scroll and Ruo Ruo instead of Zhang Yi. There was information about the game that the player Zhang Yi was attacked by the critical strike skill. The player Mu Chen Yi lost 32 whole and 78 hundredths of a million HP. The system showed that Zhang Yi no longer has the possibility of resurrection, so now he has died. Zhang Yi couldn't believe it. Apocalypse is a virtual reality game, which was created by thousands of the best designers from all over the world, and its cost was 3 million yuan and it took 5 years to create. This is a modern action game that tells about the period of the middle of the 21st century, when alien monsters invaded the earth through wormholes and attacked people. The battle between the two sides caused serious damage to the ecological environment of the earth, and all non-human beings living on it were infected with something and began to mutate. And no one can avoid disaster if they don't get into the game. All players who do not enter the game will be forcibly killed by the apocalypse system and become NPS in the game world. However, after the launch of the open beta version of the game, all the players who entered the game faced one problem. They could not leave the game and had to stay in it forever. This caused a strong panic and fear among these people. But Zhang Yi had been in the game for eight whole years, and just like that, his best friend Mu Chen and his beloved Zhou Zhou betrayed him. Zhang Yi just couldn't accept that. Zhang Yi woke up from a nightmare in his bed and screamed in fear why Mu Chen and Ruo Ruo had betrayed him. He looked at the calendar, it said that the gates to the world of the apocalypse would open in exactly 2 hours and 12 minutes. Then Zhang Yi looked at the date and thought that it was simply impossible, because it was written that today was the 28th of August, 2025th year, and then the apocalypse had not even been presented yet. Zhang Yi got out of bed, went to the window and opened the curtains, the bright morning sun shone into his eyes. Zhang Yi realized that now he had somehow returned to the time when the game apocalypse had not yet been created. Then Zhang Yi decided that he would make Mu Chen pay for his betrayal with his life. Now, the most important thing Zhang Yi had to do was to find the divine talent cards scattered around before the game even started. In the apocalypse, the system will randomly endow all players with talent when they enter the game, and rare divine talents can only be activated by finding a talent card in the real world. Sky Fortune, the company that developed the apocalypse, released 10 divine talent cards that were randomly scattered around the world. Zhang Yi thought that if the location of these cards remain the same, then the closest divine talent card to him would be on the roof of the Jinmao building, the tallest commercial building in Linhai City. Zhang Yi rushed to run to the building, and then climbed the wall for a long time to climb to the very top of the building. And Zhang Yi was absolutely right, the map was in the same place. But suddenly someone called out to Zhang Yi and said that the entire Jinmao building, including this map, belongs only to him. It was Lu Chengji, but Zhang Yi turned around and said that the card would belong to whoever took it first. Lu Chengji, as Zhang Yi remembered from his past life, was the owner of the last divine talent card, as well as the heir to the largest real estate company in Linhai City. A crowd of people appeared in front of Zhang Yi, threatening him with weapons, and Lu Chengji said that he would now show Zhang Yi what happens when someone takes what rightfully belongs to him. The sky was still clear and the sun was shining brightly. Zhang Yi rushed to the Divine Talent card, and a lot of bullets were flying at him. But Zhang Yi managed to run up to the Divine Talent card. Then Lu Chengji shouted at him not to even think about touching his Divine Talent card and pointed a weapon at him. But Zhang Yi managed to grab the Divine Talent card, and the bullet flew right into his forehead. It was exactly 12 o'clock on the clock. Suddenly the game started. The question appeared whether Zhang Yi wanted to enter the apocalypse. The player's data has been downloaded. Other people had the same data loading. 
there was an inscription that you can go on a journey around the world intended for you. Zhang Yi finally returned to the world of the apocalypse. Zhang Yi stood and looked at some kind of pyramid, in the center of which there was something like a big eye. Zhang Yi immediately thought about the Divine Talent card and saw it in front of him. He slowly approached the Divine Talent card. Zhang Yi examined her, and then extended his hand forward. At that moment, Zhang Yi thought that he was finally able to do it, get a Divine Talent card. Suddenly, the card turned into a young girl with wings on her back. The girl welcomed Zhang Yi to the world of the apocalypse. There is information about the player Zhang Yi. It said his name, that he was now 22 years old, and that he was unemployed, and there was also a photo of the player. The girl greeted player number 8857 and said that she was his unique gaming spirit. The girl congratulated Zhang Yi on receiving the Divine Talent card with the skill for my own use. Zhang Yi stood and held a divine talent card with the skill for my own use. This skill allows you to copy the talents of other players. The cooldown time is one hour. There are three camps to choose from in the game. The first camp of elves, the second camp of beasts, and the friction camp of humans. Zhang Yi could choose which of these three camps he would like to join. Zhang Yi thought for a while and remembered that in his previous life he had chosen a human camp. Human camp players can increase their prestige rating by 20%. And in the apocalypse, the most important thing is just the same prestige. Suddenly, the game spirit told Zhang Yi to wait a bit, because she had something else for him. The girl handed him a scroll of dragon's blood. Zhang Yi couldn't figure out how the dragon's blood scroll ended up here. Zhang Yi thought that it was very funny that the item that Mu Chen wanted so much, in the end, now belongs to Zhang Yi again. After the system discovered the dragon blood scroll, a hidden dragon camp was opened. Zhang Yi didn't understand what kind of hidden dragon camp it was. He walked up to the entrance of the hidden dragon camp and held out his hand. There was a flash of bright light, and then Zhang Yi somehow ended up on the train. Zhang Yi thought that the beginning of the game is still the same as in his previous life. He watched as other people enthusiastically discuss the game and its excellent design. Many just couldn't wait to finally be able to kill all sorts of monsters. Then Zhang Yi decided that he should check his status first. He uploaded personal information. All his characteristics were listed there. He is now at the first level. He has no profession. His race is a dragon. There is no chance of resurrection. Talent for my own use. Strength 3 and height 15 stars. Intelligence also 3 and height 15 stars. Endurance 2 and height 15 stars. Agility 3 and height 15 stars, physique 5 and the height of 15 stars. Zhang Yi looked at the unique skill of the dragon race, the flame of the infernal dragon. The first level is golden, passive. Every time Zhang Yi makes a normal attack or uses a skill, there is a zero point, one tenth chance of summoning a hell dragon, and then all enemies in range will receive 150% of his attack power as a level. Zhang Yi thought that this was all pretty good. Even though the chance of the skill triggering is somewhat low, its effect is almost as good as that of the Divine Talent card. Now Zhang Yi decided that he should already familiarize himself with his Divine Talent card. It's time for him to copy someone's skill. Zhang Yi stood and listened to some bald man talking about how everyone in the team could relax with him. It was at this moment that Chan decided that this man would be his first target. He decided to borrow his talent from him. Zhang Yi walked up to the man from behind and put his hand on his shoulder. Suddenly, the man abruptly turned around and asked if Zhang Yi wanted to run into a fight with such behavior. Then Zhang Yi quickly apologized to the man and said that he had simply confused him with one of his acquaintances. At this moment, Zhang Yi had already successfully copied the treasure hunter talent. This ability allows you to find the nearest treasure chests within a radius of 500 meters. Zhang Yi thought that this was a pretty good talent and it could well be useful to him. The host welcomed all the players to the apocalypse and wished them to enjoy the game to the fullest. Meanwhile, the bald guy was about to get off the train, but Zhang Yi stopped him, blocking his way. Zhang Yi said that it was impossible to act rashly in any case, because it could be very dangerous outside. But the bald man said it was just a game and there was nothing to be afraid of, and then called Zhang Yi a coward. Before leaving, the man told the other guys that they could just hide here and watch him. When the man jumped out, he found himself right in the mouth of a giant spider with glowing purple eyes. It was reported that player 13,580 was killed by a giant spider. It was discovered that player 13,580 does not have the possibility of resurrection. The people who were standing next to Zhang Yi and saw everything that was happening were completely terrified of all this and clutched their heads. Then Zhang Yi turned around and told the other people that this was no longer just a game. If they died here, then they would die in the real world. 
he said it was now a battle for his life. On the street, meanwhile, there were huge piles of giant spiders. The first survival task appeared to find a safe zone. It was unexpected to follow the map to find the 886th security zone in the 8th district. In the City of Hope, the safety of the players will be guaranteed. The remaining time is 3 hours and 58 minutes. The reward for passing is the possibility of rebirth. In case of failure of the test, the death of the player occurs. People didn't know what to do now, because they are now surrounded by giant spiders everywhere. Someone said that now all they have to do is gather their strength and attack the giant spiders head on. Jangy suddenly remembered that in his previous life, someone from the seventh carriage had used a safety hammer as a weapon. In the end, it turned out that it was a disguised weapon of blue quality, so all the other players were very jealous. Then player Zhang Yi found a blue quality ice blade in the train carriage. It was a weapon made of cold and meteoric iron. Zhang Yi then activated his treasure hunter talent borrowed from another player, and discovered that there was another treasure chest hidden somewhere very close by. Zhang Yi walked over, bent down and saw this very treasure chest. In this treasure chest, Zhang Yi found a dragon breath potion of blue quality. The description said that do not underestimate this potion, because it contains powerful dragon breath. Meanwhile, there were more and more giant spiders. When Zhang Yi finally finished with the chest, he rushed at the giant spiders with an ice blade and started killing them. Everyone on the train admired the fact that player Zhang Yi had a blue quality ice blade, and said that it was simply incredible. But surrounded by so many giant spiders, even if you have a legendary weapon in your hands, you have to try very hard not to die. When Zhang Yi was fighting giant spiders, someone called him a fool and said that he probably just really wanted to die. Then Zhang Yi decided that he should try out the Dragon Breath Potion on these giant spiders, which he found recently in a treasure chest. Zhang Yi opened the vial and released the Dragon Flame from it. Then there was information that Zhang Yi had raised his level. Zhang Yi received 50 copper coins and one life potion. Player Zhang Yi thought that he hadn't thought that it could be so useful, and it would be great if he could get at least a few more Dragon Breath potions. Zhang Yi was standing on the dead spiders, and everyone else was shocked that Zhang Yi was able to kill all the giant spiders with just one attack. They even thought it might be some kind of cheating. Someone asked why they shouldn't go to Zhang Yi and form a team with him, because he definitely has a lot of potential. At that moment, Zhang Yi thought that all he would have to do next was follow to the City of Hope. It was already dark outside, there was a full moon in the sky, and in the dark Zhang was walking and trying to find the City of Hope. Suddenly, player Zhang Yi heard that someone was running after him from behind, he stopped and thought. Zhang Yi abruptly turned around and a man rushed to his feet, who began to beg him to save his daughter, whom the monsters had taken somewhere into the forest. Zhang Yi remembered that in his past life, many players got into trouble in this forest, but there must be a lot of good things hidden in it. Suddenly, the face of the man who asked for help changed dramatically and he had an evil smile. Zhang Yi walked forward through the gloomy dark forest, there were bats everywhere. Then Zhang Yi started shouting and carefully examining everything around. Then Zhang Yi said that this forest was too big and asked the man who asked him to help find his daughter where exactly the girl could be. Then Zhang Yi turned around and noticed that the man had disappeared for some reason and he didn't know where he could have gone, because he had been right here recently. Then Zhang decided that in this case he would just go ahead, and the man himself would be able to catch up with him after. But Zhang had no idea that the man was still watching him from the darkness. Then Zhang Yi went ahead along the path to inspect the forest. Finally, player Zhang Yi saw a little girl holding a lollipop in one hand and wiping her eyes with her other hand which were crying from fear. Zhang Yi quickly approached the girl and said that it was not very safe to wander around here alone, so he could accompany her. The girl ran closer to Zhang Yi. Suddenly, the same man who asked for help to find his daughter appeared. There was a woman with him who said she was very grateful to him for being able to bring another victim to her. Zhang Yi covered the girl with his hand and stood forward. At that moment, a new task appeared in front of him. The player Zhang Yi had to rescue a girl who got lost in a dark forest and help bring her back to the City of Hope. The time for this task was only 50, 9 minutes, the reward was Talia's ring. If the test fails, absolutely nothing will happen. Zhang Yi immediately remembered that in his previous life, players had stumbled upon a hidden quest while exploring the dark forest. Many players were immediately happy to take on such tasks in order to gain experience and some kind of rewards. So player Zhang Yi thought that he simply could not miss such a great opportunity. Zhang Yi accepted the assignment. The woman looked like a spider. She had the lower body and legs like a spider, but the upper body and head were like a human. She told Zhang Yi to stand still and just let her eat it. Then the player Zhang Yi told the little girl not to run away until the big brother sorted out all the problems and took her to a safe place, to the City of Hope. 
Jang Yi took out his weapon and charged at Spider Woman, but she turned out to have steel skin. The woman only laughed out loud and said that Jang Yi's physical attacks were absolutely harmless to her. The spirit of the game, which the player Zhang Yi met at the very beginning, told him that this monster is a charming spider, a boss of the 20th rank. Now Zhang Yi's skills are not enough to cope with the spider and win. The spirit of the game advised Zhang Yi to simply abandon the quest and leave. But Zhang Yi was very serious. He said that there was no way he would leave alone without this little girl who was standing behind him right now and crying loudly from fright. Then the spirit of the game said that in any case, this is the only option to survive. But the spirit believed that the player Zhang Yi would do the right thing and do everything as needed. Then the player Zhang Yi said that everything should not end so easily and again rushed to attack the lovely spider. Zhang Yi remembered that in the real world it was clear that there was a hidden chest nearby, and perhaps it contained some kind of book where there was a skill to defeat this adorable spider. Zhang Yi activated the treasure hunter skill again, and the player Zhang Yi was absolutely right. He found a treasure chest nearby. Zhang Yi attacked the lovely spider, she attacked him and thus Zhang Yi was able to get to the treasure chest. Then the lovely spider realized that the target of Zhang Yi's attack was not her at all. At this moment, Zhang Yi was already opening the treasure chest. In the chest, Zhang Yi acquired a new blue quality item, the lightning chain skill book. Zhang Yi was very glad that he was right and there really was a skill hidden in the chest that would help him in the battle with the lovely spider. This item had a rare rank, the required rank was 20. In the application it was said that this item releases a chain of lightning bolts that can bounce from one enemy to another enemy while dealing 200 units of damage. Each attack that kills an enemy increases the chain level by 10%. Meanwhile, a lovely spider named Jang and a bunch of giant spiders on the player. But Jang Yi managed to react, abruptly turned around and directed a lightning strike at the lovely spider, saying that now she should feel the power of a real attack. The lovely spider fell and was defeated by her enemy. Jang Yi was glad, because now he had received an epic weapon, so today was really a very good day. The epic weapon that Zhang Yi received is a poisonous dagger, a blade that is impregnated with spider venom. It poisons the enemy and deals him 20 points of damage per second. It was finally over, and the player Zhang Yi told the little girl that everything would be fine now, and they could go to a safe place. The girl thanked her brother and they walked forward holding hands together. When they came to the City of Hope, they were very happy. There were a lot of people there. Among all this crowd, Zhang Yi did not even notice the one from whom he once stole a Divine Talent card right from under his nose. There was also Lu Chengji, who noticed the player Zhang Yi. Lu Chengji was still very angry at Zhang Yi and ordered his man to keep an eye on Zhang Yi. The girl looked at brother Zhang with tenderness and sincerely smiled and politely thanked him, because thanks to his help, she was able to stay alive and finally returned home. As a reward for successfully completing the task of rescuing a little girl from the dark forest and returning her home, Zhang Yi received Talia's ring, which he now held in his hand. This ring can increase the player's luck by 55 points. The system congratulated Zhang Yi on successfully completing the quest and receiving a Talia ring as a reward. Then Zhang Yi thought that it turned out to be a good luck outfit, and in the apocalypse luck is a very rare attribute. The higher the player's luck, the more generous the reward for successful completion of tasks will be. At that moment, Zhang Yi heard some loud voices behind him. One person said not to miss a great opportunity, you could pay for a successful improvement. He did not take money for failure. A bunch of curious players crowded around this man. Then the player Zhang Yi thought that this man could probably use some cheats, otherwise how could the chance of successful improvement be so high? Some guy replied that Zhang Yi just doesn't understand anything because this guy's talent is forging and improvement. Everyone was very surprised how the man could forge such a strong weapon as the sword he was holding in his hands now. Then Zhang Yi decided that he should try to borrow this man's talent. Zhang Yi successfully copied this man's forging and improvement talent, and his chance of successful equipment increased by 50%. Then Zhang Yi took his poison dagger and decided to test his new talent on it. It turned out that this really works great. The player Zhang Yi was able to successfully improve his weapon. Zhang Yi immediately thought that with such a talent, he shouldn't even worry about improving equipment in the future. Besides, it could turn out to be a very good and profitable business. The crowd immediately saw that the player had Zhang and an epic weapon with a level plus 15, and they were very interested in it. People started coming up to him and looking. One of the people said that weapons plus 15 are already quite difficult to find, and this one also has an epic rarity. He asked where this guy came from in the first place. Suddenly, Zhang Yi's stamina scale dropped sharply. 
then the spirit of the game told him that since his stamina had dropped so much, it wouldn't hurt for him to go to the nearest tavern and get some rest. The player Zhangyi agreed that he really should have a little rest first, and only then he will go to improve the level. The tavern is such a special place where players can relax after the battle. When Zhangyi came to the tavern, he paid for one room with a gold coin. When Zhangyi finally got the key to his room, he headed down the corridor to his resting place. When suddenly I heard a conversation behind two men who were sitting at a round table. They were discussing that they had recently been talking on the world channel about how someone was able to complete a secret mission in a dark forest. One of the men said that the man who was able to complete this secret mission in the dark forest was very lucky, because he was even able to get an epic weapon. Then player Zhang Yi thought that the luck he got was also part of his strength, which is why he should do everything necessary to create a balance between these two characteristics. When Zhang Yi finally came to his room, he almost immediately went to bed. Lying on a soft bed, player Zhang Yi reflected that in order to move on, he needed to get to the 20th level as quickly as possible and change his profession in order to have the opportunity to learn stronger skills. A change of profession is possible only after the apocalypse player reaches the 20th level. After that, the player can change his profession to one of seven classes, Knight, Berserker, Assassin, Mage, Archer, Priest and Beast Tamer. Then the player Zhang Yi remembered about his old friend Mu Chen, who betrayed him in his previous life. He thought that Mu Chen must definitely pay for his betrayal. In the morning, Zhang Yi walked around the area. Suddenly he felt that there was someone next to him, someone whom he could not see, which meant that this person was hiding somewhere. Then Zhang Yi said that it was time to stop hiding and that this person should already come out. The person who was following Zhang Yi was an old acquaintance of his, Lu Chengji. Lu Chengji said that last time Zhang Yi was just very lucky and managed to escape. But this time he is not going to let him go so easily. But Lu Chengji wasn't alone. There were about nine other people with him. Zhang Yi turned to them and his force mode was activated. Lu Chengji told everyone to start attacking Zhang Yi. Then Zhang said that they really should try it, because he just wanted to show them his new skill, a chain of lightning. But suddenly, when Zhang Yi tried to use the lightning chain, someone imposed silence on him and he could not do anything. Lu Chengji smiled and said that Zhang Yi wouldn't be able to use his skills for two whole minutes now, so he should just accept his fate. It turned out that the silence on Zhang Yi was imposed by the magician who was standing behind Lu Chengji. But when Lu Chengji's men tried to attack Zhang and they noticed that he wasn't taking any damage at all. Besides, Zhang Yi's face was quite calm. They noticed that Zhang Yi's equipment is too powerful, so their damage is not enough for him. Lu Chengji got angry and said that they were all just a bunch of trash, they should step back and just watch him do everything himself now. Lu Chengji decided to attack Zhang Yi. Then Zhang Yi noticed that Lu Chengji had a blue rarity weapon and it had been upgraded to plus 15. Lu Chengji pointed the arrow of his crossbow at Zhang Yi and said that now he would be happy to see if Zhang Yi could stand up to his weapon calmly. Lu Chengji sent a meteor shower of arrows to Zhang Yi. Then the player Zhang Yi noticed that the total number of arrows exceeds 100, so he will be able to comply with all the conditions, and Zhang Yi decided to release the Infernal Dragon. Player Lu Chengji was very scared when he saw the Infernal Dragon. Everyone started screaming and running away from Zhang Yi while he was directing the Infernal Dragon flames at them. The enemies were defeated and Zhang Yi stood completely safe. He said that in the beginning he was a little worried about how to reach the 20th level, but now he thanked the player Lu Chengji for the experience and equipment. Zhang Yi walked over and picked up Lu Chengji's level 20 bow, which was lying on the ground without a master. It was a silver moon bow plus 15. It had a blue rarity. The skill that this silver moon bow possessed was a meteor shower of arrows. The arrow splits into a hundred pieces and falls from the sky like meteorites. The system congratulated Zhang Yi on reaching the 20th level. It was said that now he needed to go to the main city and find a career change officer in order to begin the profession change test. After a player who has a chance of rebirth dies in the game, he returns to the Fountain of Rebirth in the City of Hope. That's where Lu Chengji went with half of his team after Zhang Yi defeated them. Zhang Yi was calmly walking through the City of Hope at this time and was thinking that the Silver Moon Bow could definitely be useful to him. And the player Lu Chengji shouted after the player Zhang Yi that in the future he would definitely pay in front of him for what he had done. But Zhang Yi only replied that, of course, everything would be like that and wished Lu Cheng's good luck in this difficult matter. Finally, Zhang Yi found a career change officer and approached him. 
Zhang Yi told the officer that he would like to change his profession. Then the profession change officer extended his hand to Zhang Yi and said that the profession change dungeon was open. Zhang Yi passed through the portal. There he saw the seven great professions of the apocalypse, knight, berserker, assassin, mage, archer, priest and beast tamer. The most unpopular profession of these seven is the profession of animal tamer. Although animal tamers can make their animals do all the dirty work, their cultivation is quite difficult. That is why Zhang did not want to choose a beast tamer, because besides all this, when raising animals, all the resources obtained are divided between the tamer and the beasts. The resources of the apocalypse are very rare, so in the future, due to lack of resources, tamers simply will not be able to develop, which makes this profession the weakest of all seven. But, the most suitable professions for the dragon race are beast tamers and knights. Zhang Yi thought that knight sounded like a very good choice. However, with his strong start, he becomes weaker in the later stages of the game. Zhang Yi remembered that in his past life, many players died because of this. Then Zhang Yi thought that the beast tamer was unique after all. Thanks to his divine talent, Zhang Yi would be able to receive 10 times more resources than the others. And, if you use the dragon race, it is quite possible to get strong companions and create the perfect team. Zhang Yi approached the beast tamer and wanted to choose a profession. Suddenly the man who was sitting on the floor with a book, who is the beast tamer, said that he had been waiting here for a very long time and looked at the player Zhang Yi. The spirit of the game said that she would advise Zhang Yi to think carefully again before making this choice because choosing the right profession can make life much easier. But Zhang Yi decided that he would still choose a beast tamer and press the selection button. The tamer pointed his finger at Zhang Yi's forehead and congratulated him on becoming a beast tamer. After that, Zhang Yi returned to the City of Hope and the career change officer congratulated Zhang Yi on the successful change of his profession. While Zhang Yi was standing, he accidentally overheard a conversation between two men passing by. One told the other that from the very beginning he had warned him that it was very dangerous in the city of dead spirits, and now because of some elite monster they all died. The man was indignant that he had lost a lot of equipment because of this. Another man, whose arm was broken, replied that he could not have known that the monster would be so strong and asked him to stop blaming everything that happened on him. He then asked why no one had said anything when they had just entered the city of dead spirits. This conversation made the player Zhang Yi think about the city of dead spirits. Zhang Yi thought that with the experience from his past life and with a properly assembled team, killing the boss should not be difficult for him. Then Zhang Yi accidentally heard how three guys were looking for players in the city of dead spirits who had already reached the 20th level and changed their profession. They still had the last two places left. At that moment, a man in a raincoat approached them and asked them to take him into their team. It was a young mage girl. The guys cheerfully welcomed her to their team. Then Zhang Yi shouted that he also wanted to go to the City of Dead Spirits with them and ran up to the guys. The main player from the team was thinking, because Zhang is a beast tamer who has just changed his profession. And this meant that he has no skills at all and is just a simple magician. But there was still one person missing from the team, so Zhang was brought along. It was dark enough in the city of dead spirits and there were graves everywhere. The team was walking forward, and the head asked Zhang Yi if he had seen that the beast tamer has the lowest damage of all other professions. Then Zhang Yi replied that he chose the profession of animal tamer because he really likes raising animals. The mage girl laughed softly at Zhang Yi. Suddenly, medium-sized stones flew at them. The mage girl immediately began to beat them off with her spear. The chief told everyone to be careful, as the enemies are already on the way. The team stood next to each other and were surrounded by many skeletons. These skeletons were armed, and they started attacking Zhang Yi's team. The head started fighting monsters and shouted that the ranged monsters would leave on the other team members. The mage girl was also fighting with her stick with skeletons with the help of a fireball. Suddenly one of the monsters crept up from behind and put a sword right to her throat. Then Zhang Yi used his power. Zhang Yi used his beast tamer skills and summoned a flock of crows. Summoning a flock of crows is a basic skill of a beast tamer. This skill gives you the opportunity to summon a flock of deadly crows to distract the enemy's attention and inflict 50 magic damage. The mage girl looked at Zhang Yi and thanked him for his help. Suddenly, Zhang Yi grabbed the girl by the hand and ran while saying that these monsters are undead, so they will probably come to life very soon, so they should get out of here as soon as possible. The chief shouted that everyone should keep moving forward. Finally, the team got close to the castle where the epic monster lived, which they had to defeat. Zhang Yi told the girl magician that the tactics are very simple. The knight will lure the boss to himself and will tanch it. And at this time they will just strike from the back. 
so they just need to dodge the boss's magic in the second stage. One of the team members asked where Zhang Yi knew everything so well, if he had already been here by chance. Zhang Yi laughed shyly and said that he just knows it all from experience in online games. Zhang Yi took out his poisonous dagger, which is created from the poisonous fangs of a spider and poisons the enemy when dealing damage, while dealing him 20 damage per second. Then one of the team members began to doubt the player Zhang Yi. He thought that he had a poison dagger plus 15, and this is an epic weapon, so it was very strange that a beginner had it, so Zhang also knows so much about dungeons. The guy thought that Zhang Yi was clearly deceiving them and that he probably had a bunch of other cool things, so they could definitely make a big profit this time. The team entered the building. It was very dark and Zhang Yi told everyone to hurry up, because if the team split up, it would be very dangerous to wander alone. But suddenly the head, along with the rest of the team, closed the door and said that the player Zhang Yi could stay there with the girl magician, and they would return very soon. The girl asked what they were doing at all, they were all on the same team. But Zhang Yi said that they probably got into a bad team, since they clearly want the boss to get rid of the two of them, and the team will then take the experience and rewards for themselves. It was already too late to run somewhere, the boss was right in front of them. He hit them, but Zhang Yi managed to grab the girl and dodge the boss's blow together with her. The girl said that Zhang Yi had saved her life again and thanked him. The boss was an archmage, an undead with the 30th level, he was chained up. Player Zhang Yi looked at the boss and said that it would be very difficult for them to withstand the attacks of this boss. Then the girl magician decided to summon the undead warriors with the talent of the soul. Who will be able to help them? But, she said that these warriors won't last long, so they urgently need to come up with some way to get out of this place. The warriors began to resist the boss. Soul summoning is a talent that allows you to summon dead creatures that will fight on your side, but it only works for 5 minutes, and its recharge time is 24 hours. Zhang Yi said he only needed a little time and used a lightning chain. He said he was well aware of the weakness of this boss, so the girl could just leave it all to him. But the girl said that in this case she would cover him and use a multiple fireball. Zhang Yi realized that the source of this archmage boss energy was the jewel on the back of his neck. Also, this point is his most important weakness. Zhang Yi Snavpar called a flock of crows and directed them to distract the boss. Meanwhile, Zhang Yi stuck his poison dagger into a weak spot on the back of the archmage's neck. There was information about the victory over the boss, and the system congratulated Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi's level has increased to the 25th. The reward for the victory was the Staff of the Current Light. The skill that is attached to this staff, the Cry of the Icy Wind, is that a blizzard is released, which freezes all opponents within a radius of 100 meters for 5 seconds and deals 500 magic damage. The cooldown time of the skill is 1 hour. The Girl Magician and Zhang Yi were very happy with such a reward, because the drop rate of this staff is 2%. Then player Zhang Yi handed the staff to the Girl Magician. She asked in surprise why he was giving it to her. To this, Zhang Yi replied that the staff is a magician's weapon, and a beast tamer absolutely does not need it. And then Zhang Yi added that if the girl had not used her talent, they would have died long ago. The team of traders, who had been standing outside the door all this time, noticed that the movement and noise inside had already stopped. They thought the boss should have dealt with them by now. Then the commander said it was time for them to come in and take all the trophies for themselves. But Zhang Yi and the mage girl came out first before the team entered. The team was very surprised that Zhang Yi and the magician survived. Zhang Yi asked if they were upset that they couldn't see the two corpses. Then one of the team members told the head that it looks like they underestimated Zhang Yi and the magician's girlfriend. The commander said that they should not be afraid of anything because Zhang Yi and the girl must be on their last legs. The team rushed to the attack. Zhang Yi covered the magician's girlfriend with himself at the moment when the gang leader rushed to attack them. Zhang Yi was very angry. He remembered his old friend, Mu Chen, who had betrayed him in his past life and could not understand why someone would betray his comrades. Zhang Yi took the girl's hand and successfully copied her divine soul summoning talent. Player Zhang Yi called for the soul rebirth of the undead archmage they had just killed. Zhang Yi said that now these guys will be very unlucky. The team was very scared and could not understand why Zhang Yi was able to revive the archmage boss. So the archmage killed this team of players. The system then determined that the players Wang Hao, Du Wai and Su Yu were attacked by the soul of an undead archmage. They had no chance of rebirth, so now they are dead. After that, Zhang Yi just fainted. Player Zhang Yi's stamina had reached a minimum, so he needed to go to the rest area as soon as possible and get some rest. Zhang Yi saw everything vaguely and his eyes closed by themselves. He said something about being very tired and sleepy and did not understand what was happening to him. Zhang Yi became the second player in the ranking. 
while he was sleeping, he remembered his childhood, his father. Jang Yi remembered very well the moment when he told his father that he was already tired of all these games and wanted to buy something new as soon as possible. The father replied that if Zhang could win, he would buy him some new game. Then Zhang Yi was very happy and said that he would definitely get the first place. Now Zhang Yi was thinking that he was stuck in this game forever and would never be able to play a new game again. Zhang woke up and was already in his room in the tavern. He had a very bad headache. He sat down on the bed and was asked how long he had slept. Then the player Zhang Yi got up to pour himself a drink and saw a letter on the table. Zhang Yi didn't know where the letter could have come from here. When Zhang Yi picked up the letter, he immediately realized that it was a letter from his new girlfriend. In the letter, she thanked Zhang Yi very much for saving her. She wrote that when Zhang Yi finds this letter, she will most likely not be around, because she needs to go in search of her brother. The girl said that in the storage ring there are all the things that were left after the team of traitors and perhaps Zhang Yi may need them someday. Then he will be able to use them. At the end, the girl introduced herself as Han Yaru and wrote that he really hopes that he and the player Zhang Yi will meet again one day. Zhang Yi took the ring from the table and looked at what was in it. Probably, that gang killed a lot of people, since there were quite a lot of things in the ring. Zhang Yi thought that now he certainly shouldn't worry about equipment, and it remains only to find himself a beast. If player Zhang's memory did not change him, he thought that there must be a hidden dungeon somewhere in the northern part. The Tomb of the Dragon Crown is the only dungeon in which there is a high probability that animals with a level up to the 40th can come across. But, of course, this place is not so simple. Zhang Yi had to act wisely, because if he came across the same players as Wang Hao, Du Wai and Su Yu, then he could have many more problems. Zhang Yi went to the City of Hope to find a team again, but finding a team was very difficult. Then Zhang Yi saw a bunch of guys who were recruiting a team. They offered to join their team, said that they have a lot of buns and they go on raids on the dungeons, and also just have fun together. A girl came up to this team and cheerfully said that she would really like to become part of their gang. Then Zhang Yi was very surprised that he did not immediately think about the guild. After all, in his previous life, he almost immediately teamed up with Mu Chen and forgot that the guild is the best way to recruit players. Zhang Yi came to the guild hall and was approached by a girl manager, who immediately asked if she could help Zhang Yi in some way. Zhang said that he would like to create his own guild. Then the manager replied that to begin with, the player Zhang Yi should choose a name for his guild. Zhang Yi remembered his father again at that moment. His father always said that the creator of the game is a deity, and the players who participate in this game challenge this deity. Then Zhang Yi called his guild Hunting for Gods. The manager congratulated Zhang Yi on the fact that he had created his own guild Hunting for Gods and could now invite other players to join it. Zhang Yi sadly wondered if he would have to hand out leaflets on the street. But then Zhang Yi thought that this was definitely a bad method, because recruiting players through flyers is not accurate. So it's better to find a place where there will be a lot of experts. If you believe the schedule, then after the survival mission, the first competition should begin. And Zhang Yi was completely delighted. Competition. After all, it is there that all experts from everywhere will gather. The competition is such a special mission to celebrate the arrival of the players. The City of Hope will hold the first one-on-one -on -one duel competition, in which all players who have changed their profession will be able to participate. The winner of the test will receive an amazing reward. The reward for the competition is one rare skill. Zhang Yi was asked if he accepts this mission. Player Zhang Yi pressed the confirmation button. Zhang Yi uploaded the test. The presenter greeted everyone present. He said that this competition is a real paradise for fighters. The competition will be held in the heavenly arena. Zhang Yi stood and listened to the players' conversations behind his back. He saw that someone has the 31st level, someone has the 29th, someone has the 30th. Zhang Yi then thought that he had probably been sleeping for too long, since the other players had already managed to reach the 30th level, and he was still at the 25th. Player Zhang Yi decided that this could not continue and he just needed to raise his level as quickly as possible. At this time, there were already battles going on in the heavenly arena. The assassin, whose name was also Ning, was able to get close to the magician and now the magician had nowhere to go. Everyone just admired this fight, because this magician had just incredible equipment. After all, the magician didn't even move, even though the assassin was right in front of him. The magician, whose name was Wu Kai, used the prison of shadows against the assassin. No one could figure out where this mage got the epic skill from. Shadow Prison is an exclusive mage skill that paralyzes an enemy and deals shadow damage to him. The duration of paralysis and damage depend on the skill level. The assassin asked the magician how much money he wanted in order to surrender, maybe a million. He said that as soon as they leave the competition, 
The magician will be able to immediately get the amount he needs. But the magician only laughed in response. He thought that if then, in the real world, he had this million, his company would not have gone bankrupt, but would have continued to live. He had a wife and daughter, but they could not stay with him and then he decided to enter the apocalypse. The magician said that he would not give up for anything in the world and would not lose to his enemy. In this new life, the magician saw no place for failures and defeats. The system congratulated the player Wu Kai, a magician, over the assassin Ning and successful passage to the next round. Magician Wu Kai looked haughtily at the other players and proudly said that they would all fall before his might. Zhang Yi thought that this Wu Kai was really very good. Du Feng was announced as the next player in the competition. It was announced that the random set for the first round had already been completed, so the players were asked to go to the appropriate site at the appointed time. Zhang Yi remembered that in his past life he had often seen Du Feng's name on the world channel. This player could go through many difficult dungeons alone. Zhang Yi thought that he should get him to himself. Before the player Zhang Yi, information appeared that he should go to the number 20 playground and his opponent there would be Du Feng. When Zhang Yi arrived at court number 20, player Du Feng had been sitting there waiting for him for a long time. Du Feng said that he had been waiting here for a very long time, so they should start right now. Du Feng was a knight and his level was 35. Zhang Yi was very surprised, because he had to fight with a knight of the 35th level. Although the game had only recently started, how did he manage to rise so quickly? Zhang Yi thought that Du Feng was a fierce grind maniac. Player Du Feng stood up and told Zhang Yi that his level was quite low, so he would let him attack first. Otherwise it would look like Du Feng had taken advantage of his opponent. Du Feng said he wanted to see if Zhang Yi would stand up and said it was time for them to start. Then Zhang Yi said that Du Feng should not look down on other players, because the winner and loser have not yet been determined. Then Zhang Yi called a flock of crows, and Du Feng said that he greatly respected that Zhang Yi was so confident in himself and then added that he would now check how smart Zhang Yi was. Player Du Feng used the Sword Guardian skill. The Guardian of the Sword is an exclusive knight skill that summons several sword souls, each of which can withstand 500 damage and has the property of reflection. The number of swords increases with increasing level. It was announced that the player Zhang Yi was affected by the reflected damage of the Sword Guardian skill, and lost 200 HP. Then Zhang Yi thought that Du Feng had said that he would let him strike first, so it turns out that it was just a trap. Du Feng asked if Zhang Yi was afraid to fight him. Zhang Yi thought that if he wanted to inflict damage on player Du Feng, then first he needed to break through the four sword souls. Each sword can withstand 500 damage, which means that Zhang Yi will have to take 2000 reflected damage, and he has only 2000 health points. At that moment, Du Feng decided to attack and said that in a duel, any doubts you had could give the enemy a great opportunity to kill you, and then asked if Zhang Yi was really that stupid. Zhang Yi understood that if things continued like this, he would surely lose, so he needed to figure out how to get rid of Du Feng's swords. Then Zhang Yi suddenly remembered about the things from the ring that he had left from the traitors. Among all those things was the undead armor, which makes it possible that if you receive fatal damage, you will not die, but restore 10% of health points. The cooldown of this skill is 24 hours. Zhang Yi decided that all he could do was hope for this undead armor and put it on. Zhang Yi then used a chain of lightning bolts. Du Feng asked why player Zhang Yi was so eager to die, because with his health, he would die from soul swords before he could hit him. Du Feng said that this was definitely the end now and raised his sword in his hands. When Zhang Yi was already near Du Feng and Du Feng hit him with his sword, information appeared that the player Zhang Yi used the undead armor skill, which consists in the fact that you will not die if you receive fatal damage, but restore 10% of health points. The cooldown of this skill is 24 hours. Du Feng was very surprised that Zhang Yi did not die from the reflected damage of the sword souls. And then player Du Feng received a critical hit from player Zhang Yi's poison dagger and lost 2,500 health points. Zhang Yi said that Du Feng was completely right when he said that this would definitely be the end. So player Du Feng was defeated by player Zhang Yi. There was a congratulation from player Zhang Yi on his victory over player Du Feng and successful passage to the next round of the competition. Zhang Yi approached the player Du Feng and stretched out his hand to him, saying that Du Feng was very strong, and if it wasn't for the undead armor, he probably wouldn't have been able to defeat him, he would have lost before he even managed to do anything. 
Then the player Zhang Yi asked if Duan Feng wanted to join his guild. He said that he had a very difficult hidden dungeon in mind and if they worked together, they would be able to pass it without any problems. Duan Feng extended his hand to Zhang Yi and said that he had underestimated him from the very beginning, so he probably wasn't that simple. As for the guild, Duan Feng asked for some time to think about this proposal. The presenter congratulated everyone who was able to successfully pass the first round of the competition and said that it was time to look at the next selection through the world channel. Next up were Wu Kai and the mage girl. It was an old acquaintance of Zhang Yi, Han Yeru. The girl entered the arena, and the host announced the start of the second round. Someone from the audience said that this magician girl should not be underestimated, because in the last round she easily defeated her opponent. Another person said that probably now there will be a legendary battle of the strongest magicians. Wu Kai looked at the player Han Yaru and told her not to even think that he would spare her, because there is no such thing as sympathy in this arena. Player Han Yaru looked at her opponent, player Wu Kai, with a menacing expression on her face and said that he should stop talking already and just show what he is capable of. Near the heavenly arena, someone from the crowd shouted that everyone should hurry to the heavenly arena as soon as possible. Because right now the legendary battle of the two strongest magicians will begin here, and this simply cannot be missed. Zhang Yi, as soon as he heard this, rather headed for the heavenly arena, as he really wanted to get this strongest magician to himself. Duan Feng told the player Zhang Yi that he would go for a while to swing a little, so if Zhang Yi suddenly wants to ask him something, he can just write to him in the guild chat. To this, Zhang Yi said that Duan Feng could do as he wanted and called him an insensitive grinding machine. Player Duan Feng joined the Zhang Yi guild hunting for gods. Finally, Duan Feng wrote in the chat that he hopes very much that he will be able to see the notification that Zhang Yi became the champion of these competitions, otherwise he simply lost for nothing. Zhang Yi thought to himself that although player Duan Feng had just joined his god hunting guild, he was already feeling a huge pressure from him. That's why player Zhang thought that Duan Feng would definitely become a very good teammate. But first, Zhang Yi decided that he should go and see the strongest magician at the heavenly arena. Zhang Yi was very surprised when he saw Han Yaru fighting Wu Kai in the arena. The rivals were facing each other, Han Yaru was very determined. But her opponent was not going to be defeated either. Han Yaru immediately used the Ice Wind Staff skill, which she got from the boss she defeated together with Zhang Yi. Then Wu Kai, who was frozen and could not move, laughed and said that Han Yaru had a pretty good staff, but very soon it would belong to him. But Han Yeru replied that they would look into it if Wu Kai could survive. With these words, Han Yeru directed the Meteor Shower skill at Wu Kai. The Meteor Shower of the 4th level summons a large number of fire meteorites, each of which deals 500 fire damage, and the number of meteorites increases with increasing level. The crowd shouted in surprise that the player Han Yeru was very strong and did not understand why her opponent Wu Kai was not doing anything at all. Was he really just going to lose this fight like that? Someone even said that he expected to see the legendary beautiful battle of the strongest magicians. But in the end it turned out that it was just a waste of time. At that moment, Zhang Yi thought that it looked like Han Yaru would really win. But for some reason he had some not very good feeling. Then Wu Kai suddenly smiled and a bright fire appeared, which shone so that everyone at the heavenly arena began to cover their eyes. And suddenly Wu Kai disappeared somewhere. No one understood how it happened and where he went. Zhang Yi didn't understand how Wu Kai could know a skill that he had never even heard of in his previous life. Finally Wu Kai returned, and Han Yeru was defeated. She was lying in the arena, and Wu Kai was standing and holding his staff in his hands. Wu Kai then said that he was very sorry, because if only Han Yaru had not met him, then with such an ability, she would have easily been able to reach the finals. There was a complete misunderstanding in the crowd about where Wu Kai had disappeared and how he had returned again. Wu Kai not only beat the girl, but also took her weapon. At that moment, Zhang Yi thought that he even felt sorry for Han Yaru. Zhang Yi ascended to the heavenly arena and approached Han Yaru. He helped her up and asked if she was okay. Han Yaru was very apologetic, because Zhang Yi gave her this staff, and she couldn't even protect it. Zhang Yi said there was absolutely nothing wrong with it and she could just leave it to him. He would reach the final and give her back her staff. In the second round, player Zhang Yi fought a player named Chen Feng and won by advancing to the next round. Wu Kai fought a player named Qin Long in the next round and won again, advancing to the next stage. Zhang Yi then fought the girl with a fire wheel and successfully advanced to the next stage. So, after countless rounds, there are finally only the last two players who will fight in the final for the title of champion. The first player is a wandering magician, Wu Kai. The second player is the one and only beast tamer, Zhang Yi. The host offered to look at which of these two will become the winner of the last duel and receive the title of champion. 
The crowd was absolutely delighted. The audience just couldn't wait for the final battle for the title of champion to begin. Someone from the audience said that the beast tamer Zhang Yi was just a savage and it was hard to even think that he would be able to reach the finals. Someone from the audience recognized Zhang as the same guy who had recently killed a lovely spider in a dark forest. Wu Kai stood in front of Zhang Yi and said that Zhang Yi looked like he was going to eat him alive. Zhang Yi replied that more than anything else in the world, he hates those who take things from other people. Wu Kai then said that if Zhang Yi wanted to take back Han Yaru's staff, then he should come over and just take it. Wu Kai used the disappearing skill again, and he and Zhang Yi disappeared. The audience was very unhappy, because they would like to see how the battle is going. Zhang Yi and Wu Kai found themselves in the space of nothingness. Then the player Zhang Yi realized that this is why Han Yaru disappeared. Wu Kai just created a separate space. The space of nothingness is a legendary talent that allows the player to create a virtual space in which the creator increases his crown by 30%, and the enemy's damage is reduced by 30%. This skill is valid for 5 minutes. Wu Kai said that absolutely no one can defeat him in this space. Besides, this space also absorbs the chance of rebirth after Zhang's respawn and will still remain here. Wu Kai smiled and said that if Zhang Yi surrendered and admitted defeat, he promised to spare him. Zhang Yi wanted to hit Wu Kai, but Wu Kai managed to dodge. Zhang Yi thought that he would not be able to copy Wu Kai's talent and calling crows here would be absolutely useless. Wu Kai then wounded Zhang Yi with a shadow arrow and dealt him 700 health points of damage. Zhang Yi was disappointed that such an ordinary spell took off one third of his health points. If this continues, then he is more likely to just die. But after Zhang Yi's death, he will be able to come to life in the same space. Then Zhang Yi smiled and pointed his poison dagger at himself. Wu Kai didn't understand what Zhang Yi was doing. Zhang Yi inflicted fatal damage to himself with a poisonous dagger and died. Since the player Zhang Yi was found to have a chance of rebirth, he came back to life again and found himself in the same space. Wu Kai was very surprised by this turn of events. The special territory does not work according to the rules of the competition, and the player can be reborn at the place of his death without going to the fountain of rebirth. Zhang Yi used the soul summoning skill. Wu Kai asked how dare Zhang Yi play such games with him. Zhang Yi said that even if he lost one chance of rebirth, Wu Kai would not be able to get away with it and Zhang Yi used his beast tamer skill to summon a flock of crows again. Wu Kai was very unhappy. He tried to wave away the annoying birds and shouted that he hated crows more than anything in the world. Then Zhang Yi asked if Wu Kai was ready, and then said he was starting and smiled solemnly. Zhang Yi said he really wanted to see if Wu Kai would feel the difference this time and attacked him with attacks. Wu Kai thought that Zhang Yi was too fast and it was very different from what it was before. He practically couldn't keep up with him. Zhang Yi said that Wu Kai should try out the power of a double lightning strike and hit the Wu Kai player with a double lightning chain. Wu Kai screamed in pain. Then he stood up and said that he would never lose again. Wu Kai's damage from the double chain lightning strike was minus 800 health points. Wu Kai repeated over and over again that he would never lose again. Wu Kai then shouted and struck Zhang Yi with a sword, and Zhang did not expect this. But Zhang Yi was fine and said that now they would look at how Wu Kai would not lose and hit him again. So the player Zhang Yi was able to defeat the player Wu Kai and he was congratulated on winning and receiving the title of champion. Wu Kai and Zhang Yi returned to the Divine Arena again. The spectators who missed the whole fight were very unhappy. They couldn't believe that it was already over and they didn't even see anything. They were delighted that Wu Kai had been beaten so badly, this time it was the opposite. Zhang Yi even took the staff away from him. Someone from the audience said that Wu Kai deserved it because he was the first to beat the girl and took her weapon from her. The host approached Zhang, raised his hand up and said that everyone should congratulate Zhang Yi on winning and acquiring the title of champion. Everyone was surprised that the beast tamer could become the champion of the competition. Someone even shouted that he would like to become his subject. Zhang Yi smiled and looked at Han Yaru, who was standing in the crowd of spectators. The girl looked at Zhang and with gratitude and kindness, she thought that they really sat it, took her staff. The host showed the player Zhang Yi a huge chest and said that this was his reward. When he opened this chest, he would be able to get equipment of exceptional rarity. The host then asked if Zhang Yi was surprised. Zhang Yi walked up to the chest and thought that this was very good, because his level 20 poison dagger should have been changed by now, so he could use a new weapon. Zhang Yi opened the chest that contained the Sword of Ice and Flame. Zhang Yi picked up the Sword of Ice and Flame and thought that all this was not in vain, because not only did he get a new weapon, he did not waste his chance to revive in vain. He was able to return the staff. Finally, Zhang Yi told his opponent Wu Kai that he should not think that he could do whatever he wanted just because they were in the game. 
Zhang Yi advised him to finally become a more decent person. When Zhang Yi left the heavenly arena, he was congratulated on having received the title of champion, wanted to become his subjects, and asked to be added to friends. Han Yeru also congratulated player Zhang Yi on the title of champion. Zhang Yi approached Han Yeru, smiled and handed her the staff, saying that he had returned it as promised. Han Yeru took back her staff with a smile. Then the player Han Yeru joined the Zhang Yi guild hunting for gods. After that, Zhang Yi received a lot of applications to join the guild, more than 900. Everyone thought that Zhang Yi was a very strong guild leader and rather wanted to join him. Then he asked him to accept them into the guild and said that they could behave very nicely. But Zhang Yi was just running away from them. When Zhang Yi and Han Yeru came running to the City of Hope, Zhang Yi said that for the first time in his life so many people were running after him. He even joked that if other people didn't know anything, they might think that he owed all these people money. Zhang Yi was well aware that there was a limit of places in the guild, so he could not add any random people to it. At the moment, only Hiller is missing from his guild. But Zhang Yi thought that even so, only with players Duan Feng and Han Yeru would he be able to pass the Dragon Crown to him. In his first level guild, the Hunt for Gods, there were 10 places available. Each level increases the limit by 5. Suddenly, a man appeared in front of Zhang Yi and attacked him. Zhang Yi asked who this person was and what he needed in general. Han Yeru immediately recognized this man. It was her acquaintance, whom Vavka Kin Long. Han Yeru asked him what he was doing here and where her older brother was. Kin Long replied that he had just seen Han Yeru at the entrance to the city, so he decided to follow her. Kin Long said that Han Yeru's older brother was busy with a very important matter right now, so he left him to guard Miss Han Yeru. Zhang Yi asked how Han Yeru knew this person. Han Yeru replied that Kin Long was a good friend of her older brother. Zhang Yi told Kin Long that they were going to the Dragon Crown Tomb Dungeon. Kin Long immediately replied that he would go with them. Zhang Yi agreed and told Kin Long to follow him. Duan Feng was already standing at the entrance of the Dragon Crown Tomb. At this time, he was thinking that Zhang Yi was pretty good because they had met not so long ago and he had already been able to become a champion and even found two strong allies in the guild. Then Zhang Yi came to the tomb, along with Kin Long and Han Yeru. Zhang Yi said that Duan Feng seemed to be in a good mood and asked if he had raised the level again. Zhang Yi then said that since everyone was gathered now, they could already go to the Dragon Crown tomb. The four of them entered the tomb. At this time, someone was watching them. There were two of these people and one told the other that it was necessary to inform the boss that Zhang Yi and his guild had entered the Dragon Crown tomb. When the guild went inside, they saw many statues. Han Yeru said that all these statues are very beautiful. Han Yeru walked up to one of the statues and carefully began to examine it. It was a statue of a knight with a sword, she had red eyes. Zhang Yi said that everyone should be careful, because these are the main monsters of the tomb of the crown of the other. Zhang Yi and everyone else grouped together and quickly approached each other. Then Zhang Yi told Duan Feng that he would be a tank and they would all cover him together. Zhang Yi then said that everyone should stay as close to each other as possible. The statues of the knights were advancing. They were getting closer and had already started attacking with swords. Then Duan Feng said that such cans were not enough to kill him, took out his sword and deflected the blow of the Iron Knight. Duan Feng then said that the monster should die now. The others also fought with iron monsters. Zhang Yi attacked them with a sword, Kin Long shot an arrow. Then the Zhang Yi guild saw a red horseman on a horse who was standing behind all the other knights. This was a dragon blood knight who was level 35. The knight went to attack on horseback and quickly got close to the enemies. Duan Feng managed to use his sword defense in time to deflect the dragon blood knight's blow. Duan Feng then took out his weapon and used a whirlwind of swords against the enemies. Whirlwind of swords is an exclusive knight skill that summons a whirlwind of swords that deals 3000 physical damage to all enemies within its radius. The enemies were defeated, but the dragon's blood knight told Lord Shigura to wake up. At this time, in the Tower of Eternity, the master was watching Zhang Yi. The girl who was with the master said that he was clearly interested in Zhang Yi. The master replied that everything is true because he sees his old friend in him, and that perhaps his eyes are letting him down, because that person is no longer there, and he remembered pushing one guy off a cliff straight down. Then the master said that it was very interesting, and especially for Zhang Yi and his team, he decided to increase the difficulty. The greedy dragon, Shigura, absorbed the power of all the dead subordinates and became a second rank crown dragon. Zhang Yi was shocked when he saw the second rank crown dragon. Zhang Yi then thought that this meant that the monster egg falling from the boss would be even better. The health points of all players were understood at a critical rate. Kin Long said that this second rank crown dragon is too strong, so if things continue like this, they could all die. Zhang Yi shouted that they needed to split up. 
He told them to run as far away as possible and do everything possible to avoid being attacked by the second rank crown dragon. When the dragon was already closed, Zhang Yi asked Duan Feng to use sword protection. The dragon was very huge and started spewing flames. Duan Feng used the sword defense skill, but then said that it was all just useless because this dragon has too much damage. So far, Duan Feng has been able to block this attack, but the shield will definitely not be able to withstand the dragon's next breath. Zhang Yi then told Duan Feng to leave it to him. Finally, the dragon's breath ended. Zhang Yi and Qin Long rushed to attack the second rank crown dragon. Zhang Yi told Qin Long to punch the dragon in the eyes, as this is his only weakness. Qin Long replied that he understood everything. Back then, Qin Long used a fourth level soporific arrow. The soporific arrow is an exclusive archer's skill. It allows you to release an arrow with a sleeping pill from the bow, which stuns the target for four seconds. Qin Long hit the dragon, and the dragon fell. Zhang Yi shouted that if he hit the weak point of the dragon, it would weaken for a while, so they should all attack him together now. Now the dragon is in a weakened state. A weakened state is a state in which the target receives 100% more damage. Duan Feng and Qin Long went to attack the enemy. Han Yeru used the cry of the icy wind and froze the dragon for a while. Zhang Yi changed his weapon and hit the dragon with a new sword. The system congratulated the players on killing the greedy dragon of the crown of the second rank, Shigura. Items appeared, the breastplate of greed, the sword of greed and greed greaves. Zhang Yi thought that as he expected, a boss with a higher rank drops more loot. Qin Long said they should look at the reward now. Everyone came up to Zhang Yi and Zhang said that they could take all the equipment for themselves, and he only needed an egg. Just at this time, a gang entered the dragon crown tomb and they wanted to kill Zhang Yi who already wanted to take the dragon egg in his hands. Qin Long protected Zhang Yi from the enemy's attack, and arrows flew at him. Zhang Yi asked Qin Long why he sacrificed himself for him. Qin Long replied that Zhang Yi had once slept with Miss Han Yeru, so he just wanted to repay the debt. Qin Long then said that there was no need to worry about this, because he still had a chance of rebirth, so he would wait in the city and really hope that Zhang Yi would be able to protect Han Yeru. After that, player Qin Long disappeared. Zhang Yi asked the gang who they were in general and why they attacked from behind like the last rats. At that moment, Lu Chengji came out from behind the gang. Lu Chengji said that he had already told Zhang Yi that the day would come when he would pay for everything, and it just so happened that this day was probably today. Zhang Yi was very upset about meeting Lu Chengji and his people again. Zhang Yi told Han Yaru and Duan Feng not to interfere in this fight, as he and Lu Chengji have personal scores. Zhang Yi cut his hand with a sword and dripped on the dragon egg. A huge dragon spirit emerged from the egg. Zhang Yi was surprised at what the egg of the rarest beast in the apocalypse actually was. Zhang Yi told the dragon that he would like to sign a contract with him. Suanli, a small dragon hatched from the egg. Duan Feng said that probably all the beasts of the beast tamer are very cute, and Han Yaru stood in shock and did not know what to say. Then Lu Chengji looked at the little dragon and started laughing loudly, and then said that he could crush this crumb with one hand. The other was clearly displeased with such words. Lu Chengji asked what happened, did the little dragon get upset and asked him not to bite, and then started laughing even louder. Then the little dragon spewed flames directly at Lu Chengji and his men, but Lu Chengji escaped in time. Everyone was surprised that this little beast could do so much damage alone. Zhang Yi walked up to his little dragon and said that it was a pity that Lu Chengji managed to escape, and then added that it was time for them all to return. Han Yeru asked who these people were and what they thought of themselves at all. Then Zhang Yi said that, judging by the symbols on their equipment, they must have been people from some other camp or race in general. But Zhang Yi had no idea what they were doing here. Han Yeru asked what kind of breast race it was. Zhang Yi wondered what the sign on the equipment of these people could mean. Finally, Duan Feng, Zhang Yi, and Han Yeru returned to the City of Hope. Qin Long was already waiting for them there, as promised. They approached Qin Long, and he was very surprised that they could even bring such a cute dragon from the tomb. But the dragon showed with all his appearance that he was not in a good mood right now. Zhang Yi advised Qin Long to be careful, as this little dragon has a rather aggressive nature. Suddenly there was information that due to the fact that the players of the 886th zone killed the greedy dragon of the crown, Shiguru, in a secret dungeon, the world boss Golden Skeleton King, will appear in the City of Hope much earlier. The players of the 886th zone were advised to get ready. Zhang Yi was very surprised, because killing the boss of the secret dungeon hastened the arrival of the world boss and this was not even in his previous life. Clouds of bright green light appeared in the sky, similar to thick clouds in some kind of funnel. The sky began to look very intimidating, 
The players Yang Yi, Han Yeru, Duan Feng and Qin Long looked at the sky. Han Yeru said that this skeleton king had a pretty spectacular appearance, and then asked how strong he was at all. Zhang Yi replied that this discount king is very strong. At this time, Zhang Yi remembered how in his previous life, this discount king had single-handedly destroyed half of Hope City, and thus killed almost 60% of all players. But the new Apocalypse City will open only after the murder of the Golden Skeleton King, and only then will the player Zhang Yi be able to finally find his old friend Mu Chen and take revenge on him for his betrayal. At this time, the servants brought two dragon eggs to some man. The man asked why one egg was missing. The servant replied that in the 886th zone, they met a beast tamer who killed the crown dragon before they arrived and signed a contract with the black dragon. The man became very curious to know about the 886th zone, and he allowed the servant to go. Then the man went to some door, went inside. There were a huge number of dragon eggs in the room. After a short time, the world boss Golden Skeleton King finally arrived in the City of Hope and the new task of the players was to protect the City of Hope. The Golden Skeleton King apologized to the greedy dragon Shigeru and said that today he would definitely avenge him to all the residents of the City of Hope. Then the Golden Skeleton King summoned his dead skeleton warriors and they started attacking the City of Hope. All the players of the Apocalypse were very surprised that the Golden Skeleton King, the boss of the 50th level, appeared so soon, because this is a strong increase in the complexity of the game. One of the players said that in this case, if they kill this Golden Skeleton King, then a lot of good equipment will surely fall from it. Another player said that this boss of the Golden Skeleton King was clearly brought to the city by some idiot, and he really wanted to find out what kind of person he was, because he was very angry with him. The players of the City of Hope have a new mission the mission of the world boss, the defense of the City of Hope. The players had to stop the invasion of the Golden Skeleton King on the City of Hope. The three players who do the most damage to the Golden Skeleton King will receive excellent rewards for this. The reward will be a very large amount of gold and experience, legendary equipment. In case of failure of this test, all the players of the 886th zone will die. Then the player Zhang Yi thought that everything is exactly the same as in his previous life. In addition to killing the Golden Skeleton King, it is necessary to inflict as much damage as possible in order to get a good loot. This time, Zhang Yi's player will need to act much faster. Player Zhang Yi turned to his fellow player Duan Feng and player Qin Long and said that they needed to stop panicking, because the Golden Skeleton boss moves very slowly, so all they need to do is keep a distance with him, about a hundred meters and they will just use ranged attacks. He then added that if they all listened to his instructions, they would definitely be able to kill the Golden Skeleton King. Then Zhang Yi said that player Duan Feng should attract mobs, and the others, player Qin Long and player Han Yeru, would go with him to attack the boss. Everyone agreed with the commander's proposal and decided to act according to his plan. At that moment, the Golden Skeleton King told all his skeleton soldiers to destroy all players who would attack them. Player Zhang Yi's team rushed to attack the enemies, and the skeleton monsters rushed at them in response. Player Duan Feng said that all the attacks of these skeleton monsters are too powerful, and it will be quite difficult to repel them. At that moment, a girl unknown to them earlier, whose name was Xiao Yao, was treating one of the players who was seriously injured. She asked him to be patient a little longer and said that she would finish soon. Then one of the skeleton warriors wanted to attack the girl, but Zhang managed to repel him. Player Zhang Yi shouted that it was too dangerous outside the city and they should all return to the city. Zhang Yi then said that everyone should be careful with these groups of skeleton warriors and asked player Duan Feng to destroy their formation. Player Duan Feng took out his weapon and rushed to destroy the formation. To attack, player Duan Feng used his special sword vortex skill and bravely fought the skeletal monsters. At this time, another team was standing nearby and watching Zhang Yi and his team of god hunters fight with skeletal monsters. One of the team members told their commander that if things continued like this, the team of god hunters would take all the reward from killing the golden skeleton king. The head of the guild replied that it was necessary to contact other guild leaders and it was impossible to allow the team of god hunters to take all the rewards from killing the golden skeleton king for themselves. Player Zhang Yi wanted to attack his enemy, but the head of another guild decided that he thought too much of himself and decided to attack player Zhang Yi with a fireball. Zhang Yi did not immediately understand what had happened at all, and when he turned around, he saw another guild in front of him and asked what the hell they were doing and why they were attacking him. 
The head of the other guild said that they were here to collect the reward from killing the Golden Skeleton King and simply could not allow the team of god hunters to take all the laurels for themselves. Zhang Yi thought that it was just another bunch of greedy idiots who wanted to take the reward for themselves, mistakenly believing that they could handle the Golden Skeleton King alone. Zhang Yi said that he didn't have time to mess with them and added that the Golden Skeleton King was right in front of them right now and they could just kill him and take the reward for themselves. At that moment, the Golden Skeleton King was thinking about how stupid all these people were and that he should send them all to hell. He walked up to the crowd of people and raised his giant sword, intending to strike at the players. The Golden Skeleton King used the Golden Shield skill for his attack. Zhang Yi did not understand what had happened, and at that moment a girl who had recently treated some guy came to his aid. Player Zhang Yi asked the girl why she didn't leave. Then the girl replied that she noticed that there was not enough healer in the team of god hunters and decided to join their team and help. Zhang Yi looked at the girl in surprise and sincerely thanked her. At that moment, player Kin Long saw that Han Yeru was in danger and shouted to warn her. Then Han Yeru said that her leg was stuck. The golden skeleton king was already approaching her. Player Zhang Yi shouted that she needed to be careful. The Golden Skeleton King said that there was no point in resisting anymore, because death would be the only way out for them. The Golden Skeleton King was about to attack the player Han Yeru with his sword. But at that moment Han Yeru's brother came running and told Han Yeru to leave here and leave the Golden Skeleton King to him. Then the Golden Skeleton King said that brother Han Yeru was another player who was looking for his death, and asked if he really thought he could defeat him, because he was the King of Death. Then the Skeleton King added that he hadn't even started using his powers yet. Then Brother Han Yeru said that he would like the boss to show him how strong the so-called King of Death can be. With these words, Brother Han Yeru rushed to attack his opponent and hit him several times. As a result of this battle, Brother Han Yeru received quite a lot of damage, but he expected this. The Golden Skeleton King asked if this was all that Brother Han Yeru was capable of, and added that he was even tickled. The Golden Skeleton King stood in front of the player and laughed loudly. Then Brother Han Yeru said that the King of Death should not be so self-confident, because it was just a warm-up so far and everything is still ahead. At that moment, Brother Han Yeru activated the Berserk State. The Berserker State is the exclusive combat form of the Berserker. Every second, it lowers the player's health points by 1%, but for each percentage of health points lost, the damage level increases by 10%. Then Brother Han Yeru told the Golden Skeleton King to observe and use the Berserker Dissection skill. The player attacked the Golden Skeleton King and he lost first a thousand health points, then two thousand, then three and a half thousand, and Brother Han Yeru continued to attack. The Death King definitely felt this attack, and the player asked if he was tickled now. The Golden Skeleton King said that a mere mortal does not dare to behave like this with him, so he must pay for his actions. The King of Death hit the player with a sword, but Brother Han Yeru managed to put up a defense from his own weapon and did not let himself be hit. At that moment, Zhang Yi, who was standing on the sidelines and watching everything that was happening with the team of god hunters, noticed that Brother Han Yeru relies on spending health points to become stronger, but his health is almost at zero, so any slightest mistake means death for him. At the moment when Brother Han Yeru was thinking, the Golden Skeleton King hit him with his sword and the player lost almost all of his health points. And when Brother Han Yeru had one health point left, he used the divine talent of the Immortal Body and thus stayed alive. The Immortal Body is a divine talent card that, after activation, makes the user invulnerable for one minute. The recharge time of the Divine Talent card is 24 hours. The Golden Skeleton King couldn't understand why the player survived his attack. Then Brother Han Yeru told the Death King to keep attacking, because his fire only tickles and laughed out loud. The Death King began to get very angry at the player. Zhang Yi, who was still standing and watching the battle, said that this player is quite strong, as he can resist the Golden Skeleton King even alone. After the Death King unsuccessfully tried to attack the player several times, then Brother Han Yeru said that now it was his turn to show what he was capable of. Brother Han Yeru rushed at the Golden Skeleton King and hit him hard. The blow was so powerful that the Golden Skeleton King lost all his health points. Then the Berserker State deactivated. As a reward for killing the Golden Skeleton King and saving the City of Hope, the player received a level 40th Undead Ring. This is a ring of legendary rarity that increases all the player's stats by 10 points. The attached skill to the ring is the power of death. This skill allows the player to increase the ring attribute by 50% for each kill. Brother Han Yeru looked at the ring of the Golden Skeleton King and thought that this is a very evil ring and it will be very problematic if it falls into the wrong hands. It may well cause everyone a lot of trouble. 
When it was over, the player Zhang, with a dragon on his shoulder, approached Han Yaru's brother and thanked him for helping them in saving the City of Hope and killing the Golden Skeleton King. The guy replied that there was no need for this gratitude at all, because he helped them only for the sake of Khan Yaru. At that moment, Han Yeru threw herself into her brother's arms with joyful cries and asked where he had been missing for so long. Because they had been looking for him together with Kin Long for so long. Zhang Yi was very surprised when he realized that this player was the same big brother of Han Yeru that she had been looking for all this time. Then brother Han Yeru gently patted his sister on the head and said that she should not worry about him, because everything is fine with him, as she herself sees now. With these words, the brother handed Han Yeru the ring of the Golden Skeleton King and said that she could take it for herself. The game system congratulated the players of the 886th zone on successfully completing the task and saving the City of Hope from the invasion of the Golden Skeleton King. A new city was opened, the Demonic Tower. Then Brother Han Yeru told the team of God Hunters to go pick up the rewards of the Golden Skeleton King and it was time for them to leave here, because there was no point in staying in this place any longer. The awards included a golden soul brooch, a golden belt, a golden undead bow, and a golden cloak that Khan Yeru took for herself. Player Zhang Yi took the golden boots of the 40th level, a legendary rarity. These boots allow the player to increase all their stats by 5 points. The skill attached to them is Golden Speed. This skill allows you to increase the player's movement speed by 100%, and lasts for 20 seconds. The cooldown time of the skill is 3 minutes. Zhang Yi thought that the reward for killing the Golden Skeleton King was pretty good, and with the opening of a new city in the apocalypse, he became one step closer to his old partner, the traitor Mu Chen. When the team of God Hunters together with brother Han Yeru came to the Demon Tower, Kin Long said that this place is very different from the previous city, the City of Hope, so it seems to him that they will have quite a difficult time. The new girl from their team said that these tall towers look pretty creepy. Brother Han Yeru said that this was to be expected from the new city, if you compare it with the City of Hope then it's just like heaven and earth. Zhang Yi remembered from his past life that there are a hundred floors in the demon tower, and only those who pass all the hundred floors of this tower will be able to get into the Aeon Tower. In his previous life, during his eight years in the apocalypse, player Zhang Yi was only able to walk 50 floors. According to his memories, the monsters of the demon tower are quite dangerous, but the reward for killing them is definitely worth it. Besides, the higher the floor, the better the reward. Zhang Yi was very interested to find out what is in the Iron Tower. At this moment, the creator of the game was still watching Zhang Yi and his team of god hunters. He was watching them from the top floor of the Iron Tower. The creator said that now the real intrigue will begin. Zhang Yi, along with his guild of god hunters, stood near the demon tower and looked at it. At that moment, Zhang Yi saw three guys who were passing by them and who were running towards the tower. One of them said that they should hurry up because the demon tower will close in a few hours, and the other replied that they wouldn't be late now if they didn't have to wait for him to come to life. Zhang Yi looked at the players from his god hunter team and said that the tower opens every 7 hours, which is a great opportunity for them, so why don't they go through a couple of floors now? Du and Feng immediately agreed, and Han Yaru also reacted positively to such an offer. Then the player Zhang Yi approached Han Yaru's brother, put his hand on his shoulder and offered to go together to inspect the demonic tower. Brother Han Yeru agreed without a doubt. At this moment, the player Zhang Yi, as he wanted to do right away, copied the divine talent of Brother Han Yeru, the talent of the immortal body. Zhang Yi said that the demon tower is a single dungeon, so they will have to split up during its passage. Player Zhang Yi suggested that everyone meet a little later at the same place. Player Duan Feng said that he would go first and immediately left after saying goodbye. Zhang Yi said that Duan Feng left as soon as there was a place where he could raise his level, which upset Zhang Yi a little. Then Zhang Yi said that it was time for them to enter the Demon Tower. The players entered the first floor of the Demonic Tower. All players passed the first floor of the Demon Tower successfully. Then all the players passed the second floor successfully. So all the players have already reached the third floor of the Demonic Tower. And on the fifth floor of the Demon Tower, player Zhang Yi was rewarded with Boots of a Wild Boar of Historical Rarity and the 40th level, Gloves of a Wild Boar of Historical Rarity, and also the 40th level. So Zhang Yi has already reached the 40th level. The player Zhang Yi thought that with such a speed of cleaning, it would be absolutely no difficulty for him to pass a couple more floors. So player Zhang Yi had already reached the 7th floor of the Demon Tower, where he thought that the monsters on the 7th level of the Demon Tower were just weaklings compared to the past. At this moment, a giant monster warrior Zing, a level 55th demonic race, came. Warrior Zing asked what kind of non-entity dared to bother him. 
The spirit of the game told the player Zhang Yi that the Xing warrior is very strong. He is the commander who led the demons during the attack on the city. After the invasion failed, Demon Zing was imprisoned here in the Demon Tower. The spirit of the game said that Zhang Yi had only three minutes left and wished him good luck in this fight. Zhang Yi didn't understand why a force warrior was on the seventh floor if he was the boss of the fifteenth floor. Zhang Yi thought he should be careful. The Zing warrior decided to attack the player Zhang Yi and said that because he missed lunch, Zhang Yi would now be his meal instead. Then Zhang Yi said that his meat was quite tough and the Zing warrior could lose all his teeth while he was eating. The little dragon, who had been sitting on the shoulder of his master, the player Zhang Yi, all this time, spewed flames at the enemy. But the Zing warrior asked if Zhang Yi really believed that such a tiny light could harm him and laughed out loud. Zhang Yi said that the warrior had no damage at all and thought that it was too early for him to fight with such a thing. Player Zhang Yi wanted to attack Warrior Zing. But Warrior Zing attacked him back, and Player Zhang Yi lost a lot of health points. Then there was information that the Demonic Tower would close in 10 minutes and all players should prepare for the loss of progress. Player Zhang Yi was kneeling and leaning on his Sword of Ice and Flame. He thought that, to his great happiness, he was leaving here now. Zhang Yi stood up, looked at the Zing Warrior, pointed his weapon at him and said that he was giving him now the last chance to show what he was capable of. Warrior Zing asked how this player dares to provoke him and was about to hit him, but the time spent in the demon tower ran out and Zhang Yi disappeared. Zhang Yi said that the warrior skin should not get too upset because of this, because in a week he would come back again and then he would grind him to powder. The tower closed, and player Zhang Yi found himself outside again. He thought that the monsters in the demon tower were quite dangerous, and a little more and he could have died if only not for the closure of the demon tower. Zhang Yi saw his entire team, but only Han Yaru's brother was missing. Han Yaru asked if anyone had seen her brother. Player Zhang Yi said that it was very strange, because brother Han Yaru should have already come out. It was obvious that Han Yaru was very worried about her older brother. Then Kin Long approached Han Yaru and said that she should not worry so much about her brother, because he is very strong and will be able to stand up for himself, or maybe he just had things to do at all. Zhang Yi also tried his best to help calm Han Yaru down. He said that maybe Han Yaru's older brother just had important things to do and didn't have time to warn her, so he left. Then Zhang Yi added that he agreed with Kin Long and Han Yaru, you should not worry about your brother, because he is quite strong and will be able to stand up for himself. Han Yaru only said with sadness that she hoped very much that they were right. After some time, a new mission appeared in front of the players. It was a special mission of the Guild War, the City of Claims. In the description, it was said that in order to establish interaction between guilds, a battle between guilds will take place in the City of Claims. It was said that any large guild could participate, and the winner would receive a very generous reward, the X1 teleportation device. The players looked at the task carefully. Han Yaru said that this was the first time she had heard about a teleportation device. Teleport is one of the best items of the apocalypse, although it can't help in battle. But if you put it in a good place, you can do nothing and collect taxes for using it, and become rich. Zhang Yi already imagined himself lying down resting and getting a bunch of gold. In addition to all this, Zhang Yi was well aware that the teleportation device should help him with the search for his old partner Mu Cheng. Zhang Yi turned to the god hunters and said that they should all rest for now and in four hours, they will all have to go to the Guild War in the City of Claims together. Zhang Yi then approached the new girl, whose names were Xiao Yao and Kin Longgu. He asked if they had any plans and told them that after the battle, they got to know each other better, and then offered to join his Guild of God Hunters. Xiao Yao immediately agreed and smiled sweetly at the player Zhang Yi. Kin Long also did not hesitate for a long time and immediately agreed, because he still has to protect Miss Han Yeru. Zhang Yi said that in that case, they would meet again later. So the players Kin Long and Xiao Yao joined the Guild of God Hunters. Then Zhang Yi smiled, and thought that now all the positions in his Guild of God Hunters are occupied, so now they will definitely be able to win this Guild War. At this time, Brother Han Yeru was still on the 8th floor of the Demon Tower. He was thinking that the countdown had ended a long time ago, and he was still here, so something clearly went wrong. Brother Han Yaru was already quite tired. He was standing and leaning on his own sword. Suddenly he felt that there was someone next to him and told this person to show himself. A young guy came out of the darkness and said it would be better if Brother Han Yaru didn't come here. The guy was covered in bright green flames. Brother Han Yaru asked who this guy was, if he was a built-in character of this floor of the demon tower or if he was just a regular player. Then the player said that both of these options are wrong, but it obviously won't help Han Yaru's brother and rushed to attack him. Then Brother Han Yaru activated his immortal body skill and also rushed at his opponent. 
The battle continued for some time. The player immediately noticed that Han Yaru's brother had a divine talent, and then stopped. Brother Han Yaru asked why the player stopped. The player replied that Brother Han Yaru might think that he had already passed the test, and besides, it would be boring to fight with him. So if Brother Han Yaru swore to him that he would not tell anyone about what happened here, he would let him go. As a bonus, the guy said that he would tell Han Yaru's brother one of the secrets of the apocalypse. Brother Han Yaru asked what the secret of the apocalypse was. Then the guy explained that very soon the apocalypse will be overtaken by a huge catastrophe in which none of the players will be able to survive. But there is a chance to avoid it. Brother Han Yeru asked how to avoid this, but the guy did not answer his question. He only said that this was all he could tell him now. Brother Han Yaru would have to find out the rest himself. After that, the guy said goodbye to Han Yaru's brother and left. Brother Han Yaru asked how he could get out of here now, because the demon tower had already closed. The guy replied that the demon tower would reopen in seven days, and only then would he be able to get out. With these words, the guy slowly disappeared. Then Brother Han Yeru started thinking about what this guy said about the disaster. He stopped right after he saw Brother Han Yeru's divine talent. Could it have something to do with the disaster? And yet Brother Han Yeru wasn't completely sure that this guy had told him the truth. Jang Yi finally, after four hours of rest, met with his guild of god hunters. He said that they must all have had a good rest, so now they should try hard in the guild war and win. The system welcomed all players to the City of Claims. It was said that the players who die in the Guild War will not lose their chance for rebirth or equipment, but 20% of the crystals obtained in the City of Claims will be taken away from them as payment. This event will last 4 hours, the best guild will be evaluated by the number of crystals collected, and since the crystals have a fixed position, they will often be guarded by bosses. And now it's time for all guilds to go and collect as many crystals as possible. Jang Yi gathered with a team of god hunters. They stood in a circle and began to discuss the strategy of the fight. Jang Yi said that they were outnumbered, so they would need to split up to capture as many points as possible. So, if one of the points is attacked, they will be able to protect it altogether. Thus began the struggle of the hunters of the gods. Jang Yi and his team split up. Each of them fought on their own territory. Player Jang Yi has captured a third level water crystal mine. In the crystal mine, player Jang Yi killed a huge metal dog. The guild rating has appeared. In the first place was the guild of despicable heroes. The number of people in this guild was 20. The number of crystals collected was 10,600. In second place was the guild of god hunters. The number of people in this guild is 5. And the number of crystals collected was 5,000. The third place was taken by the promise gate guild. The guild consisted of 10 people and during the battle they collected 4,600 crystals. Jang Yi thought that now each of them is in a third level mine, so if they want to occupy a higher level, then they will probably have to seize other people's mines. But other guilds apparently decided to do the same. So the guild of the gate of promise of the third rank came to the guild of hunters of the gods. The leader of the promise gate guild was Zhao Fei Ming. Zhao Feiming said that there are only five people in the Guild of God Hunters, and each of their minds is rather poorly protected. Zhao Feiming then added that there are twice as many people in the Promise Gate Guild, so they can easily take the minds from the God Hunters if they attack them at the same time. Then Zhao Feiming ordered his guild to attack the God Hunters. The invasion of the guild began and one of the members of the Promise Gate Guild said that where they come there is no place for outsiders. The first came to capture the guild in which Khan Yeru was. Han Yeru was grabbed by some roots so that she could not move. Then Han Yeru started asking who these people were, demanding that she be released immediately, and then said that when her guild members came, they would definitely take everything back. Then Zhao Feiming said that Han Yeru has a very aggressive character, and they will see who of them will die first, and then gave an order to the members of his guild to kill Han Yaru, and laughed loudly. Han Yaru tried to escape, but she failed. The team of god hunters received information that a member of their guild, Khan Yaru, was attacked. Zhang Yi was very worried when he found out that Han Yaru had been attacked. When he wanted to go to her aid, someone attacked him from behind, but his little dragon managed to repel the attack. Then the player Zhang Yi put on golden boots and told the dragon, whom he named Xiao Hai, to stay in this mine and guard it, and Zhang Yi would go to help Han Yeru for now. The dragon stayed, and Zhang Yi left. An alert appeared that player Zhang Yi had used the Golden Boots skill, Golden Speed. Golden Speed increases the player's speed by 100%, lasts 20 seconds and recharges for 3 minutes. Zhang Yi mentally told Han Yeru not to worry, because he would soon come to her aid. Zhao Feiming put a knife to Han Yeru's throat and asked why he still did not see her friends, about whom she had recently spoken. 
At that moment, player Zhang Yi appeared and scattered all the people from Zhao Fei Ming's guild. Zhang Yi looked at Zhao Fei Ming and asked why so many people are attacking one weak girl in a crowd. Are they really just a crowd of something? Zhao Fei Ming asked how Zhang Yi, after attacking his people, still dares to tell him off who he thinks he is. Zhao Fei Ming then said that since Zhang Yi dared to come here, he should be ready to die. With these words, the player Zhao Fei Ming went to the player Zhang Yi. But Zhang Yi managed to get ahead of his enemy and approaching Zhao Fei Ming said that, unfortunately, he was destined to die by his sword. That's how Zhang killed Zhao Fei Ming. A system notification appeared that player Zhang Yi killed player Zhao Fei Ming and received 500 crystals for it. Then Zhang Yi quickly ran up to Han Yeru, looked at her worriedly, took her hand and asked if she was okay. Han Yeru looked affectionately at Zhang Yi and said that she was fine because he came just in time. Then Han Yaru thanked her savior. At that moment, the leader of the Despicable Heroes Guild, Sai Tu Yan, appeared. Sai Tu Yan clapped his hands loudly, greeted Han Yaru and said that it was quite a funny scene. The hero rescues the princess. Sai Tu Yan then added that he would never have thought that he and Han Yaru would meet again. Sai Tu Yan looked at the player Zhang Yi and told Zhang Yi to move away from Han Yaru because she belongs only to him. Han Yaru immediately became indignant and told Zhang Yi to just ignore Sai Tu Yan because he was just a strange guy who constantly showed her signs of attention in the real world. Then the player Zhang Yi grabbed Han Yeru by the hand and wanted to lead him away from Sai Tu Yang. But Sai Tu Yang suddenly blocked their path with his sword. Sai Tu Yang stopped Zhang Yi and asked if they should have a duel. Sai Tu Yan said that if he lost, he would give the Guild of God Hunters 10 mines of the third level. But in case the player Zhang Yi loses, he will have to give Han Yeru to Sai Tu Yan. But Zhang Yi said that Sai Tu Yan should just get out, because he would not be interested in fighting with such a narcissist. Then Sai Tu Yan got very angry. Sai Tu Yan decided to use the Tenfold Speed skill and attack Zhang Yi. The Tenfold Speed skill is a legendary talent that allows you to increase the attack speed by a thousand percent. And the cooldown time of this skill is two hours. Sai Tu Yan called Zhang Yi a pathetic brat and said he gave him a chance, but Zhang Yi refused it. Sai Tu Yang wanted to hit Zhang Yi with the sword, but Chang Yi managed to dodge and push Han Yeru aside. Then the player Zhang Yi got very angry at Sai Tu Yan and used the 7 star cut skill, and then said that after he dealt with Sai Tu Yan, he would come for his guild. Sai Tu Yang shouted that Zhang Yi would definitely not leave here alive. Zhang Yi was well aware that he did not have time to dodge all the swords that Sai Tu Yang was aiming at him. Then Sai Tu Yang plunged his sword into the chest of the player Zhang Yi and said that Zhang Yi would never be compared to him. Han Yaru anxiously shouted Zhang Yi's name. At this moment, player Zhang Yi said that he didn't want to upset player Sai Tu Yang, but he has a divine talent. At that moment, player Zhang Yi smiled and grabbed Sai Tu Yang's sword with his hands. Sai Tu Yan said that it was simply impossible because no one could avoid a blow from his sword. Then player Zhang Yi said that since Sai Tu Yang is so proud of his legendary talent, then they should see what Sai Tu Yang is capable of without his talent. Sai Tu Yang tried to hit Zhang Yi again and again and asked why the player Zhang Yi still hadn't died. He said that it was simply impossible and all this was probably just an illusion. Then Sai Tu Yan decided to call for help from the members of his guild of despicable heroes. He told them not to stand still, but to come to help him. When all the members of the Despicable Heroes Guild arrived, player Sai Tu Yang told them that they should immediately kill player Zhang Yi. Then player Zhang Yi laughed and asked if this was what Sai Tu Yang called a duel. Zhang Yi then said that Sai Tu Yang had apparently been planning an ambush from the very beginning. Player Sai Tu Yang shouted that player Zhang Yi would be defeated today anyway. When all the members of the Guild of Despicable Heroes decided to attack the player Zhang Yi, he thought that it would be just perfect, because he was just worried that they might not have enough crystals. Zhang Yi called the members of the Despicable Heroes Guild to him. When they started attacking player Zhang Yi, he asked if that was all they were capable of, and then added that they should continue in the same spirit. One of the players of the Despicable Heroes Guild said that something very strange is clearly happening. Because the player Zhang Yi blocks all his attacks with his body, he seems to absorb all his attacks with his body. Another player from the guild said that Zhang Yi was definitely some kind of monster. Zhang Yi then asked if they were done, and then added that it was his turn to attack now and summoned the Infernal Dragon Flame. Then the player Zai Tu Yang said that Zhang Yi should not think that Zai Tu Yang would give him his minds, since he killed him. Zai Tu Yang shouted that the victory might be only for them and wanted to say something else, but at that moment, player Zhang Yi did not let him finish and punched him in the face. Zai Tu Yang lost 500 health points. There was information that the player Zhang Yi killed the player Zai Tu Yang and received a thousand crystals for it. 
Finally, Zhang Yi said that Sai Tu Yang should not worry about this, because he already knew perfectly well that Sai Tu Yang would not keep his promise about the mines. At that moment, the rest of the God Hunters Guild members came running and Sai o Yao asked Zhang Yi and Han Yeru what had happened to them and if they were okay. Then Han Yeru said that they were fine and that they had just been attacked by the Promise Gate Guild and the Despicable Heroes Guild. But Zhang Yi protected her and was able to cope with them. After some time, the guild rating appeared again. In the first place was the Guild of Despicable Heroes. The number of people in this guild was 20. The number of crystals they collected was 25,000. The second place still belongs to the Guild of Hunters of the Gods, which consists of five people. They were able to collect 15,000 crystals. The third place was occupied by the Promise Gate Guild, which consists of 10 people. They were able to collect 7,000 crystals. Zhang Yi looked at the statistics and said that there was only half an hour left. So if they wanted to take the first place from the Despicable Heroes Guild, then the only option for them was to steal the minds of the Despicable Heroes Guild. Zhang Yi said that they should divert the attention of the Despicable Heroes Guild by using ranged attacks and steal their minds. But for that, of course, they would need the help of an expert. Then Han Yeru said that there should definitely be no problems with this, because Kin Long is an excellent bow shooter, and of course will help them in this matter. Han Yeru then asked if Kin Long wanted to try and immediately reassured him. Kin Long gripped his bow tightly in his hands, apologized, and said he didn't think he could do it. Heavy memories from the past came flooding back. Kin Long recalled the championship. Everyone was shouting that if only Kin Long hit the center of the target, he would definitely win this championship. Although Kin Long had the advantage at the very beginning, the other participants caught up with him, so everything hung on the very last arrow. Then Kin Long tried to calm himself down. He said that everything was fine and last time he was just very nervous, and now it depends on this last arrow whether he will be able to meet expectations on his account. But, that day, Kin Long never hit the center of the target. Everyone was shouting that it was just terrible, because Kin Long lost again on the last arrow. Everyone said that he was simply no champion, because he breaks under the slightest pressure, like a rack. Kin Long recalled how he was called a loser, asked if he knew exactly how to shoot, shouted that he was just useless and he should leave and never come back. Kin Long cried and thought that maybe all these people were right and archery is not something he can become a champion in. Returning back to the real world, Kin Long heard the player Zhang Yi say that he was the best of all the shooters that Zhang Yi had ever met. Zhang Yi recalled that it was Kin Long who was able to hit the dragon's eye, although he was under heavy pressure. Zhang Yi then said that it should be a piece of cake for Kin Long to deal with the Despicable Heroes Guild. Then Kin Long's eyes sparkled with a spark of hope, and he said that in that case he would try very hard. Zio Yao happily shouted that the whole team was now assembled. Kin Long aimed the arrow of his bow at the target they needed, pulled the string and let go. The arrow flew to the target. Zai Tuyan said that he had never thought before that some brat would be able to take Han Yeru from him. One of the members of the Guild of Despicable Heroes said that as soon as they take the first place, Han Yeru will definitely understand how cool Si Tuyan is. Another person from their guild said that everything would be like that, because it would be over very soon and the team of God Hunters would definitely not be able to catch up with the Guild of Despicable Heroes. At that moment, an arrow shot by Kin Long flew straight into Zai Tuyang's chest. Zai Tuyan was furious that he was attacked again. He began to ask what kind of person dared to do this and said that he would definitely get to him. Then Kin Long said that one of the Guild of Despicable Heroes has dropped out, and he leaves the rest to his partners from the Guild of Hunters of Gods. The Guild of God Hunters went on the offensive. The player Zhang Yi said that it was time to hunt to finally adjust the ratings. The guild ranking showed that the Despicable Heroes Guild, which consists of 20 people, was still in the first place. They scored 30,000 crystals. In second place is still the Guild of God Hunters of 5 people. They were able to collect 25,700 crystals. And in third place is still the Promise Gate Guild of 10 people who were able to collect 10,000 crystals. So the Guild of God Hunters fought a battle with the Guild of Despicable Heroes and took more and more crystals for themselves. When there were 50 seconds left before the end of the competition, the Hunters of the Gods took 200 more crystals for themselves. The new guild ranking showed that the Despicable Heroes Guild, which consists of 20 people, is still in the first place. They scored 31,000 crystals. In second place is still the Guild of God Hunters of 5 people. They were able to collect 27,500 crystals. And in third place is still the Promise Gate Guild of 10 people who were able to collect 12,000 crystals. The countdown to the end of the Guild War showed that there were 35 seconds left. 
Then there were 20 seconds left and the new guild ranking showed that the Despicable Heroes Guild, which consists of 20 people, was still in first place. They scored 31,500 crystals. In second place is still the Guild of God Hunters of 5 people. They were able to collect 13,000 crystals. And in third place is still the Promise Gate Guild of 10 people who were able to collect 12,000 crystals. Then the timer showed that there were only 12 seconds left. And finally, at the very last, decisive moment, the guild ranking showed that the new God Hunters Guild, which consists of five people, was in the first place now, they scored 32,000 crystals. In second place is now the guild of despicable heroes of 20 people, they were able to collect 32,200 crystals. And in third place is still the promise gate guild of 10 people who were able to collect 12,000 crystals. The system congratulated the guild of god hunters on winning the guild war, and becoming the champions of the City of Claims. After everything finally ended, player Zhang Yi, along with his guild, talked. Zhang Yi praised Qin Long and said that he knew right away that he could handle everything. Han Yaru also joined in and sincerely praised brother Qin Long. The members of the Despicable Heroes Guild were offended that they lost to the Hunters of the Gods. One of the guild members said that they had definitely lost this time. Another added that it was definitely time for them to leave now. This defeat greatly angered their head C2 Yan, he told the guys to shut up, because it was because of them that he fell so much in the eyes of Han Yaru. Meanwhile, the Guild of God Hunters was waiting to receive its well-deserved reward. The player Zhang Yi took out a teleporter from the chest and said that with this device it would be much easier for them to get to many other places. At the moment when the Guild of Despicable Heroes was passing by the Hunters of the Gods, Zai Tu Yang briefly stopped by Zhang Yi and told him that he should only wait a little, because the race of others from the tribe of gods has been watching him for a long time. Zai Tu Yang then advised Zhang Yi to forget about a quiet life forever and told his friends that they were leaving, so the guild of despicable heroes passed by. Han Yeru asked what Si Tu Yan meant when he spoke about the race of others in the Guild of Gods. Zhang Yi replied that he did not know himself, but he could assume that it might have something to do with those guys who had recently attacked them in the border of the Dragon Crown. When the Guild of God Hunters was also leaving, a young girl in a cloak crashed into Khan Yeru. She was walking very fast, apologized and asked to let her pass. In fact, at this moment, the girl used one of her skills, the skill of Cunning Theft. Cunning Theft is a special assassin skill that gives a high chance to steal an item from the inventory of any of the players. The girl stole the ring that her older brother gave to Han Yeru, smiled and walked quickly on as if nothing had happened. But at that moment, Kin Long shouted that she should have been watching where she was going. After a while, Han Yeru noticed that something was wrong. Player Zhang Yi asked Han Yeru what happened. Han Yeru replied that it seems that the girl who crashed into her was a thief, since the ring that her older brother gave her suddenly disappeared somewhere. The girl had not yet gone far, and the guild of hunters of the gods rushed in pursuit of the thief. But it was too late. When Kin Long caught up with Zhang Yi, who was running ahead of everyone, he asked if Zhang Yi had managed to catch the thief. The player Zhang Yi replied that the thief, apparently, teleported to another city, to the city of the Lazy Light. Kin Long asked, isn't Moonlight City a city of another race? Zhang Yi replied that this was the case and that perhaps that Guild of Gods might have something to do with Moonlight City, so they should personally go to Moonlight City and check everything out. Zhang Yi thought that in order to improve the talent of the dragon race, he needed the prestige of three camps, and if they went to a new city, Zhang Yi would be able to get the prestige of another camp. Besides, it would make him one step closer to Mu Chen again. Then player Zhang Yi told all the guild members to stay here, in case brother Han Yaru returned and he just went alone to Moonlight City. Han Yaru agreed, but asked Zhang Yi to be careful. Kin Long added that Zhang Yi should not worry about anything, because he will definitely protect Miss Han Yaru. Then Zhang Yi decided that he would set the teleportation coordinates in this place, so that he could immediately return here in case something went wrong. Zhang Yi asked to be teleported to Moonlight City. When the player Zhang Yi was teleported to Moonlight City, he lost 100 of his gold coins. Zhang Yi was disappointed that he had lost 100 gold coins as if they had never existed at all. He decided that the teleport tax was too expensive. Suddenly Zhang Yi heard someone yell for help. Zhang Yi thought that it was already quite late, and if someone was calling for help now, then this city was not so safe. At this time, some robbers attacked a young girl who was calling loudly for help. One of the robbers said that this girl runs pretty fast, and then asked her why she scattered here and did not run further. When the robber swung his sword and was about to hit the girl, his sword was stopped by another sword, the sword of the player Zhang Yi. The robber shouted loudly, asking what kind of brat did it, and then he added that Zhang Yi had obviously messed with the wrong person. 
Zhang Yi replied that he only knew that one should not offend defenseless girls. Then player Zhang Yi wanted to hit the robber, but he quickly told everyone to retreat, since player Zhang Yi is quite strong. After that, all the robbers ran away. Zhang Yi approached the girl and noticed that it was the same girl, who stole the ring from Han Yeru, and then asked her to honestly tell him why these guys were bothering her. Then the girl said that she stole the boss's items from them, so they have been chasing her for several cities and still won't leave her alone. Player Zhang Yi asked why they needed it. The girl replied that they were guys from the Guild of Gods and everyone is very afraid of them. As Zhang Yi thought, those people from the Dragon Crown Tomb were also from the Guild of Gods. When Zhang Yi was already leaving, he finally said that it would be dangerous for a little girl to be alone in such a place, so it's worth leaving. The girl tightly clutched her stuffed rabbit in her hands, and then said that she was very scared and did not know what to do if those people suddenly returned again. Then Zhang Yi waved his hand, letting the girl know that she could go with him. The girl excitedly shouted that she knew Moonlight City well, and Zhang was here for the first time. Then the girl added that she would not interfere with him and would definitely be able to be useful. When Zhang Yi came to the hotel in Moonlight City, he asked the manager for two rooms and paid with gold coins. Then Zhang Yi and his new acquaintance went to rest in the rooms. Zhang Yi said goodbye to the girl and closed the door to his room. Zhang Yi then immediately fell onto the bed. At that moment, player Zhang Yi thought that there was definitely nothing better than lying down on a clean and soft bed. The night came when Zhang Yi slept. The door to his room suddenly quietly opened. A girl came in. She smiled and thought that soon all the gold coins that player Zhang Yi has will belong to her. Then the girl took out her sword and swung at the sleeping Zhang Yi, intending to hit him. When she lowered the sword, it stuck into the bed, as Zhang Yi managed to dodge the sword strike. Then the girl said that Zhang Yi was just lucky and another time he would definitely not be able to dodge her blow. Suddenly, Zhang Yi slapped the girl in the face in his sleep and shouted something about why his old friend Mu Chen dared to give him. The girl recoiled and said that she was in a lot of pain. At that moment, Zhang Yi finally woke up completely and asked what this girl was doing in his room. The girl pretended to cry and said that she had a dream that those people came for her again and she was very scared, so she couldn't fall asleep again later. Then Zhang Yi tried to calm her down and said that she could sleep on his bed for now, and he would look after her. The girl lay down on the bed, and Zhang Yi stood up. Zhang Yi thought that he would gradually find out all the plans of this girl and what else he was hiding. Finally, morning came, and Zhang Yi and the girl went to look for the Guild of Gods. The girl led Zhang Yi to the Church of Moonlight City. Zhang Yi asked if the Guild of Gods was really in this place. The girl told how one day she secretly followed them, and they disappeared exactly in this place. At that moment, Mu Chen approached the girl from behind and wanted to touch her shoulder, but player Zhang Yi Zhang stopped him and asked what Mu Chen was doing here. And Mu Chen looked at Zhang Yi in surprise and asked where player Zhang Yi knew his name from. Then the player Zhang Yi shouted that he shouldn't care and hit Mu Chen in the face. Mu Chen fell and smashed his body into one of the poles that were standing behind. Someone from the crowd said that it was very surprising, because usually Mu Chen himself beats up others, but today it was the opposite. Someone else laughed and said that Mu Chen deserved it all for his behavior. Player Mu Chen stood up and assumed a sitting position on the ground. He asked what kind of vile person dared to hit him. The girl looked at Zhang Yi and said that Mu Cheng should not be provoked, because he is very dangerous. Player Zhang Yi sneered haughtily, and asked if she really thought he might be bothered by this. Then Zhang Yi thought that nothing was changing, because in his previous life, the player Mu Chen betrayed his friend, and in this life he mocks other people. Player Mu Chen used the concealment skill. Mu Chen asked if the player Zhang Yi even knows whose territory this is, and then added that he definitely won't leave here alive. Zhang Yi thought that the assassin's concealment skill was an ability that made the player invisible, and hid even his scent, and also allowed him to deal a critical blow to the enemy from the blind spot. At that moment, player Zhang Yi realized that he should be more careful. Suddenly, Zhang Yi felt a sharp gust of wind nearby and a cut appeared on his cheek. Everything was the same as in his previous life. Mu Chen had relied on the same skill back then when he killed him. Now Zhang Yi thought that he would never be able to forget what happened to him in his past life, how his comrade Mu Chen betrayed him. But this time Zhang Yi was definitely not going to lose, it was time for Mu Cheng to be defeated and die. Zhang Yi waved away every blow of his opponent, he decided that this time he would not give him the slightest chance. Mu Chen couldn't figure out how Zhang Yi could know his every punch, he should be invisible. But for all the time they had known each other, every blow of Mi Cheng had long been etched into Zhang Yi's memory which is why he knew everything in advance. Zhang Yi kicked Mu Cheng and Mu fell down again. Zhang Yi held his ice and flame sword against Mu Chen and said that Mu Chen was going to kill him, so now they will see how he is going to do it. 
The player Mu Chen excitedly asked who Zhang Yi was. Mu Chen thought that he was very unlucky to run into some crazy person here. Then the player Zhang Yi said that now Mu Chen will go to hell. A skeleton in a black cloak appeared from the ground, grabbed the player Mu Cheng and dragged Mu Cheng with him underground. But at that moment, player Zhang Yi thought that he couldn't let the man in the black cloak take Mu Cheng with him. Zhang Yi noticed that the trail of the man in the black cloak and Mu Cheng ended at the same place as the trail of the Guild of Gods. The girl said that the Guild of Gods is located where Mu Chen is, in the Church of Moonlight City. She then said that it could be very dangerous inside, and there was a possibility that Zhang Yi was being lured there on purpose. She then asked if player Zhang Yi was sure that he should go to this place alone. Then Zhang said that he should definitely go, because he has his own special reasons for doing so. Then a new acquaintance handed Zhang and two sleeping pills and said that breaking into a place like this without preparation is not the best idea, because he doesn't even have absolutely no plan. Zhang Yi asked where she got the sleeping pills from. Then she replied that she was traveling all alone. So, of course, she needed a chance to quietly get rid of her opponents. Then she said to be quiet, because their enemies seemed to be already here. Zhang Yi grabbed two guys, put sleeping pills in their mouths. They tried to resist and asked what Zhang was doing here. But Zhang Yi said they should lie down and sleep. Then Zhang Yi and his new friend took away their uniforms from the guys and put them on themselves. Zhang Yi and his new acquaintance entered the church in Moonlight City. At this time, Mu Chen was in a secret room unknown to him with some unknown person. Mu Chen asked what kind of room it was. This man chuckled and asked what it was like to be beaten by some man who appeared out of nowhere. Surely this is not a very pleasant fate. Mu Chen looked at this man and asked who he was and what he wanted from him. This guy replied that he had not brought Mu Cheng here to listen to his stupid questions and answer them. He then added that from now on, Mu Chen should just keep quiet and do whatever he is told, otherwise he may regret it very much. Zhang Yi and his companion approached the guards and said that they could already be free, but they would relieve them in the meantime. One guard was very happy about it. He said that he was so tired that he could fall asleep standing up. Another guard told them to be more attentive and not to let anyone through, otherwise it would be bad for everyone. But then, when the guards were already leaving, one of them came back, grabbed the girl by the shoulder and said that now seemed to be no time to change shifts. At that moment, she used sleeping pills and simply put those guards to sleep. The guards fell unconscious to the floor. The girl approached the dark thin one and, pointing ahead, said that the person player Zhang Yi was looking for was probably right here. Then the player Zhang Yi said that in that case they should go there. But suddenly the girl stopped, threw off the armor of the guard and said that her mission was over so he would have to go on alone. Zhang looked at the girl in surprise, then approached her and said that he had promised her a reward. With these words, player Zhang Yi handed her a bag of coins. The girl took the bag of coins and said that she had completely forgotten to warn player Zhang Yi that it was very easy to deceive others in Moonlight City. Zhang Yi thought that apparently he was right and this girl is probably one of the members of the Guild of Gods, or just works for them. But one thing Zhang Yi understood for sure, this girl's goal was not to steal the ring at all, she just had to lure Zhang Yi here. Now Zhang Yi's player was very interested to find out who was behind all her actions and this cunning plan. Zhang Yi slowly walked forward along the dark thin path, which was illuminated only by the light from the torches. Suddenly he saw several people ahead. One huge man said that he alone would be enough to easily deal with the player Zhang Yi. He added that the boss only called for nothing from all here and he will cope with everything himself. The guy with the green eyes said that their boss must have had some reason for that, since he told them all to come here. But since the bully was sure that he could handle everything himself, the other two guys decided that they would not interfere with him. Then the goon said that they could just wait a bit and watch him crush the player Zhang Yi. The bully took out a weapon from behind his back and quickly threw it at Zhang Yi Zhang, and immediately noticed that this huge guy was quite strong and he had to summon a flock of crows. After Zhang Yi's skills improved, the number of his crows doubled. Then the bully asked if Zhang Yi accidentally thought that he could defeat him with such an insignificant skill, and hit him again with his weapon. But the blow fell on Zhang Yi. Then the bully ran away, used the attribute transformation skill and jumped towards Zhang Yi. But Zhang Yi used the smooth ice skill and the bully slipped and fell. Zhang Yi asked why this bully didn't attack him. The bully replied that he would never buy into such stupid tricks. At that moment, the guy with green eyes said that he now understands why the boss told them all to come and offered to help the bully. Another guy with a mask on his face said that he could not understand why the bully was behaving so arrogantly if he was so weak. The guys rushed to save the bully. One of the guys shackled the player Zhang Yi with bandages and Zhang Yi couldn't move. The other guy, with green eyes, used the bone wall skill. Zhang Yi understood that he couldn't move right now and there was a possibility that he would hit directly against the spikes of the bone wall. 
Suddenly, Zhang Yi's little dragon player, Sio Hai, appeared. Zhang Yi enthusiastically greeted his friend. The guy in the mask was very surprised that an ordinary tamer has such a strong beast as a dragon of the crown of the first rank. Zio Hai broke the shackles and saved the player Zhang Yi. The masked guy realized that he had completely underestimated Zhang Yi. Then Zhang Yi hit the masked guy and said that it wasn't that he underestimated him at all, it was that he was too strong for him. Zhang Yi then walked up to Zio Hai, patted him and said that he was very glad to meet him again and that he did not even expect that when she met Zio Hai again, she would have already reached the first rank. By this time, the bully had already regained consciousness. The masked guy asked him what they should do now, because when they were told about Zhang Yi, no one told them about the black dragon of the first rank. The bully replied that in any case, they simply have no choice but to try and put all their strength. All three guys rushed to attack Zhang Yi and his black dragon of the first rank. Then Zhang Yi used the immortal body skill and attacked his enemies. When all three guys were already lying on the floor, the boss finally came. He said that it was all over and they could be free. The bully asked the boss to give them another chance and then they would definitely be able to defeat the player Zhang Yi. Then the boss glared at the bully and said that he told them to leave, otherwise they would definitely die. Before leaving, the bully said that he and the player Zhang Yi would definitely meet again and determine the winner next time. Zhang Yi replied that he would look forward to their next meeting. The boss of these guys said that he had finally met Zhang Yi again and then said that it wasn't Zhang Yi's first time in the apocalypse. Zhang Yi was very surprised that the boss knew about this, but he tried his best not to show it, so he said that he did not understand what this guy was talking about at all. The boss said that Zhang Yi should stop playing this show already, because everything became clear even at the time when the player Zhang Yi entered the secret dungeon almost at the start of the game and took out the dragon egg. Zhang Yi said that he doesn't have time for such conversations, so he just wants to know where Mu Chen is to pick him up. Then the boss asked why Zhang Yi was so impatient. He then added that he would like to make a business offer to the player Zhang Yi and asked if Zhang Yi would like to work for him. There were several huge dragons along with the boss. The boss promised that if the player Zhang Yi agrees to his proposal, he will not tell anyone about Zhang Yi's reincarnation, and will also give him the best equipment of the apocalypse and countless coins. But in case Zhang Yi refuses, the boss promised that the player Zhang Yi will not leave here alive. Then Zhang Yi said that he hated this type of people more than anything else in the world. And if these coins and equipment are obtained through the pain and tears of the innocent, then Zhang Yi said that he refuses such an offer. But Zhang Yi was very upset because he had already used the immortal body skill. And the boss had also seen the dragon, so he no longer had any aces up his sleeve. Zhang Yi didn't know how strong this guy was, so he was afraid that in this case he might lose his life. Fortunately, Zhang Yi set the coordinates of the teleport in the city of Dawn. Then player Zhang Yi used teleportation and disappeared. The boss thought that this time he would let the player Zhang Yi leave quietly, but next time he would definitely fight with him. After that, the boss told Mu that Zhang Yi is the reincarnation of a person to whom Mu Chen did something in the past and he now wants revenge. The boss asked Mu Chen if he thought the player Zhang Yi would let him go. Mu Chen shouted that Zhang Yi would definitely come back to kill him. Then the boss said that's why Mu Chen should act first and kill Mu Chen. He then added that Mu Chen shouldn't worry about this, because he would definitely help him. He believed that everyone in the apocalypse should obey him. He believed that his orders were absolute. And since the player Zhang Yi refused the last chance he gave him, then he will certainly die. Finally, player Zhang Yi teleported back to Dawn City. At that moment, Zhang Yi thought that he was very close to death, and if he teleported even a second later, he could only have ashes left. He remembered the dragons that were with that guy and thought that it would be very difficult to cope with them. Player Zhang Yi began to think that all this is very strange. And why did this guy think at all that this is not Zhang Yi's first time in the apocalypse? Could it be that that guy is the same as Zhang Yi himself? These thoughts haunted Zhang Yi. The spirit of the game then informed player Zhang Yi that his stamina was at a low level and he should go to the nearest resting place as soon as possible to recover his strength. Zhang Yi agreed that he had indeed spent quite a lot of his energy on this trip to Moonlight City, so it wouldn't hurt for him to find the nearest tavern and rest there. In addition, Zhang Yi was well aware that if he did not return soon, then Han Yaru and the rest of the members of the Guild of God Hunters would begin to worry about him. Then Zhang Yi decided that he could just pay for the restoration of his energy. The player Zhang Yi came to the merchant and asked him to buy energy recovery. It was worth 20 gold coins. The merchant said that it was the first time he saw a person who spends so many coins just to restore his stamina. Besides, it would be easier for ordinary people to wait and not spend so much money on restoring energy. But Zhang Yi thought that 20 gold was too much for restoring energy, because with this money he could buy himself a whole set of equipment, 
Now Zhang He only had 13,000 coins left, and he thought it would be good for him to improve his equipment. At this time, Han Yeru was sitting at the table and talking with Xiao Yao. Han Yeru asked why Zhang Yi still hasn't returned. Where is he? Xiao Yao said she was also very worried about him, whether he was in any trouble. They both hoped that Zhang Yi was fine. At this time, Zhang Yi crept up behind them, put his hands on their shoulders, smiled happily and asked what they were talking about. Because his abilities are quite enough to fight with an entire guild and get away with it. Han Yeru and Xiao Yao happily turned around and said that they were very glad to see him back. The player Zhang Yi smiled shyly, looked at Han Yeru and said that, unfortunately, he could not return the ring that Han Yeru had left her older brother. But Zhang Yi told Han Yeru not to worry too much about this, because he would do his best to find the ring and return it to her. Han Yeru smiled sweetly and said that she was fine. And besides, it happened because she was too careless. Han Yeru then said that she was very glad that Zhang Yi had returned in perfect order. Xiao Yao then looked at the leader in embarrassment and asked if Zhang Yi had seen Qin Long by chance. Player Zhang Yi replied that he had asked player Qin Long to gather some information he needed. Since since this thief was fishing in Dawn City, there must be some clues where to find the girl who stole Han Yeru's ring. Just at this moment, a tired Qin Long returned. Zhang Yi chuckled and said that they had just been discussing him, and then asked if Qin Long had found out anything about the ring thief. Qin Long replied that he had learned something, but it wasn't exactly good news. Then Qin Long said that they urgently needed to go to the auction, since the ring that Han Yeru gave her brother, and which was then stolen from her, would be put up for auction at night. At that moment, they all thought that since the ring was put up for auction, the thief would surely be there too. Zhang Yi thought that this would be just perfect, because this way he would not only be able to return the stolen ring, but also be able to find better equipment for himself, and she definitely wouldn't hurt him now. So all the members of the Guild of Hunters of the Gods decided to go to the auction. The girl who runs the auction informed the players that the monthly auction will start soon, where players will be able to find various animals all kinds of the rarest equipment, and many other rare items. Han Yeru asked if Zhang Yi was going to go with them all. Then Zhang Yi replied that he would not go with them, as he still had to look at one important place, and then he promised to return as soon as he could sort out his affairs. So Zhang left, and Han Yeru went to the auction. Player Zhang Yi thought that if his memory does not change, then there must surely be some hidden place with a bunch of good things. Even in his past life only a few people knew about this place. 